Hello everybody, welcome to Survival Chances Slimmer, the absolute maximum difficulty oxygen not included let's play. After a poll, I decided to restart our let's play on maximum difficulty settings, and we will be adding extra challenge to this run. We're on a new map, so I don't know where anything is, uh, but that map is still an oasis map. It is still an oasis map with no cool slush geysers, and it has magma channels and volcanoes, so it's probably the most difficult map you can get in the entire game. Uh, it's been selected in particular to be difficult. Uh, we are also going to be printing out a new duplicate every time one is offered. So every three cycles, we're going to get a new duplicate added to our base, up to, I think, 70 duplicates. Around 70 duplicates is probably where we need to slow down just because of game performance issues. We'll start encountering lag and things of that sort. And my cat is very happy with the new Let's Play series being started. Um, but yeah, so hardest possible map in the game, uh, printing out a new duplicate once every three cycles. In addition to that, all of the difficulty sliders have been slid up to maximum. So all of our duplicates have frankly depressing as uh, a stress debuff. They have high morale requirements. Uh, they have ravenous hunger difficulty, so they require twice the food as normal. Uh, and they also are particularly susceptible to germs. So every difficulty slider slid up to the maximum, the hardest possible <laughs> rate of accepting duplicates into the game, and the hardest possible map. This is the absolute highest challenge you can face in Oxygen Not Included, ignoring some sort of modded experience. Uh, this run will have no mods in it. We'll also be avoiding any sort of exploits, anything that I think is kind of not intended by the game developers, because uh, I, I just don't like cheating in my games. There's some pretty crazy cheats you can do in this game to, do, to make the game kind of trivially easy. We're going to be skipping all of those in this run. And in addition to that... Um, we will be uh, having a sort of companion summary series. I'll make little five minute videos summarizing the past uh, 10 cycles or so of the base as it progresses, uh, kind of like what we did in the previous Let's Play series. Uh, so stay tuned for those if you're looking for sort of shorter, more condensed content or sort of a, an overlook of how things are going. And also on the last Let's Play series, I plan on doing basically one more of these summary episodes just to summarize what I think were the mistakes that we made in the previous run, things that we can improve upon, and uh, kind of what I think at least at that point, what the strategy is for doing these hardest maximum difficulty runs. So yeah, that's basically it. And let's take a look at our starting biome here. Uh, you can note right away that we have much more water than we did last time. Last time, our entire starting biome only had 15 tons of water in it. Uh, this pool right here probably has around 45, 50 tons of water. So just this one has three times as much starting water as we did in, in all of our uh, biome last time. And it looks like we also have... Uh, more water over here, and I'm guessing there's going to be some more water elsewhere. There's usually th three pools of water in every starting biome. So we kind of, in our last Let's Play, hit a sort of glitch uh, in terms of our starting biome to make it especially difficult. Uh, and since then, they have changed the way that uh, maps generate. So if I use the same seed as last time, I don't actually get the same map that I did last time, which is kind of awkward. Um, so they, they made some change, and I've been completely unable to find any sort of map where there's there's less water. So we don't have the 15 tons of water challenge, but this is still a very difficult starting map because if you look around, you'll see that there's basically nothing in the way of oxalite. We have the five guaranteed tiles that are part of every starting biome ever, basically, right? Every, all, every time that you start a game, these five tiles will be uh, oxalite, but I don't see pretty much anything else, at least in our sort of starting radius here, no, nothing in the fog of war appears to be oxalite of any sort. We do have the locations of pretty much all the starting oxy ferns. We'll have around like 15, 16 oxy ferns uh, in our starting biome. I think we see about 13 of these right off the bat. So we can locate our oxy ferns pretty quickly, but we're also going to have to put them online pretty quickly because uh, there's just no replacement for the oxygen. We're starting off with like, this is it, right? <laughs> there's nothing else. Uh, so this doesn't have the, um, the, you know, the 15 tons uh, catch line that the last Let's Play did in terms of starting biome difficulty. 
but given that I see basically no oxalite uh, anywhere, this is really going to uh, put the game, oxygen not included, uh, it's really going to prove the title correct, because there is vanishingly little oxygen included in the starting biome. This is going to mean that we're going to have to get our industry started up uh, sort of faster than we did last time, which is also going to be challenging because um, last time we had some pretty convenient things going on in terms of setting up our industry. Um, but yeah, so there is no algae in the starting biome. It's not a uh, sandstone biome start. There's no algae, there's no coal. It's basically aluminum ore, dirt, and igneous rock. Um, usually the way that you're supposed to play this sort of starting biome is you limit your duplicate intake such that you don't exceed what your oxyferns are able to provide, right? And so you live off of what these oxyferns allow you to breathe. And uh, if, you, if you just basically don't print any, any dupes at the start, usually you'll have enough oxyferns to more or less provide your oxygen, even if they're just growing wild. Um, but we will be printing a new duplicate once every three cycles, and as a consequence, uh, we're going to have to expand our oxygen production somehow. And because we don't have any renewable sources of water, we don't have any rust, we don't have a lot of the other things that are used to, to burn and create oxygen, uh, what we're going to have to do, and what we did with our last Let's Play, is set up an ethanol industry, that we're going to start uh, harvesting the lumber from these trees, we're going to use that lumber to, in an ethanol distiller to produce ethanol, and then we're going to run that ethanol through a petroleum generator, and that petroleum generator is going to generate uh, polluted water for us, which we can then electrolyze, and as we increase our duplicate numbers even further, uh, we're going to have to domesticate a lot of those trees. Uh, we're not going to be getting net positive results in terms of water from that ethanol industry anymore and what we're going to have to rely upon is the polluted dirt output from the ethanol distillers. One ethanol distiller produces 333.3333 grams per second of polluted dirt. That polluted dirt sublimates directly into polluted oxygen which is breathable by duplicates. And so in theory an ethanol distiller provides enough oxygen for a little bit more than three duplicates. Uh, and so we can kind of keep that treadmill running and keep ourselves oxygenated. The trick is that uh, polluted dirt sublimates into oxygen very, very slowly. And so we're going to have to get this industry started right away to have any sort of oxygen at all in our base. Uh, and then we're going to have to expand it over time to build up a massive supply of polluted dirt. That way, even though the sublimation process is very slow, because we have such a huge stockpile of polluted dirt, uh, we'll be able to sustain our population. And conveniently, even though the ethanol cycle that we have with uh, domesticated trees and ethanol distillers and petroleum generators is not water positive, it is water neutral enough that just the extra water that you get from an infinite bathroom is enough to sustain that process. That basically you'll be able to have enough br duplicates breathing comfortably using that polluted dirt, uh, using the excess water that you get from the um, from the, the bathroom setups that you can do in this game. So uh, we do have a method of achieving sustainability that doesn't involve uh, ever exploring out beyond our initial starting biome. It's just gonna be a very, very difficult thing to set up and we're gonna have to build, a, build it on a very, very short time scale. So uh, very, very challenging scenario that we've, we've put out for ourselves. Uh, in addition though, we can explore out beyond our initial biome. Of course, this is Oasis and it is also a version of Oasis with magma channels and volcanoes and uh, pretty much a guarantee, because I've been handed the map from someone else, uh, that there are no real like easy, oh, you just win the game resources sitting outside of the base. There's no cool slush geysers or anything like that lying around this map. So we're not gonna find, as we explore, anything that's gonna be too game-changing, but we can find you know renewable water resources. We can find other things. And because, interestingly, uh, this map, or at least this starting biome, has uh, no iron, and, and no way to make steel, and because the swamp biomes on this uh, on this particular type of asteroid are usually pretty far away from your base, you're surrounded basically just by sandstone and hot sand, right? This sort of hotter region over here is pretty representative. Um, we don't have really any way of making a, a aqua tuner or, or other device that is capable of surviving at high temperatures, right? That all the metals that we have access to at the start 
uh, fail at usually either 75 degrees or 125 degrees, 125 degrees in the case of aqua tuners. So we're pretty limited in terms of how we harness a lot of things, uh, what sort of environments we put our stuff in. So that's something we're gonna have to keep in mind. There's very little in the way of these sort of extra resources or, or kind of tech resources, right? Things like reed fiber, uh, things like gold amalgam, uh, iron even for making steel, all this stuff is more or less uh, shut off to us because of the starting biome. In addition, very little in the way of power supplies because there's no coal in our starting biome. So again, this is probably the hardest possible difficulty setting you can run oxygen not included on, right? This is the hardest map. It's, it's a very hard instance of a hard asteroid type. Um, it's with all the difficulty sliders slid up to maximum, and it's with a policy of printing a du duplicate once every three cycles. So I've gone ahead and done a couple things here that I just kind of want to uh, show. One is I have set up 24 rotating schedules, each of them basically just st is staggered by one hour. That way we can split up our duplicates across a bunch of different schedules uh, and prevent all of them from having to go and use the bathroom at the same time. So we're gonna be able to get away with having fewer bathroom facilities, fewer kind of the, of these communal facilities. I've also gone ahead and in priorities, uh, basically just said, do what you're good at. Right, so I have an expert digger in the form of Ruby here. I have an expert researcher in the form of Ellie. I have a farmer in the form of Bubbles. And uh, I've basically just given them a little bump in the priority. I want you to do researching if it's available. I want you to do digging if it's available. I want you to do farming if it's available. Really the only one that's gonna be relevant early on is Ruby doing the, uh, the digging tasks. And I've also gone to options and I've enabled proximity. Um, there are some pros and cons of enabling proximity. I think it's a good thing to enable. I've talked about it before. Uh, I'm not gonna get it into it too much right now. And now I think it's finally time to start to planning out our base. I think what I'm gonna do for this run, even though it's pretty boring, is I'm gonna set up more or less a standard sort of 16 by 16 or 16 tile wide layout. Right, like usually people do it by 16 by four um, because we're gonna be pretty cramped for space since we're ramping up to like 70 duplicates. Um, 70 being uh, the number that, where you have two of every single unique duplicate. So we'll have two rubies, two Ellie's, two bubbles uh, by the end of the run. Um, because we're ramping up to a really large number of duplicates, we're probably not gonna make all the rooms 16 by four, which is kind of the standard. Instead, we're gonna make some of them like 16 by two, 16 by three, depending upon what we need. Uh, but I think that's gonna be the standard way that I'm gonna approach things. I'm gonna use also sort of another standard thing, which is to have a stairwell that is uh, going to be three wide. We went with a two wide stairwell in our last Let's Play, and I found that the, um, the, the gas transfer wasn't very good. And we can fix that by using a bunch of airflow tiles and mesh tiles and things of this sort around the base. Um, but I think just having a three wide uh, setup right here is gonna be good, especially because later on I'm gonna have a cooling system running throughout this entire base. And I wanna be able to govern that cooling system with a series of valves and whatnot. So uh, yeah, I think we kind of want to go with a three wide structure. So we're gonna have a uh, staircase or sort of a, a set of uh, ladders right here. We're ultimately gonna have another set of ladders right here, but I think we're gonna start with this as our central axis. Uh, and then we'll develop this one later because this is gonna be close to our water. And basically in cycle one, uh, we're really going to want to get our bathrooms, barracks, and research up and running. Uh, because we're on ravenous hunger difficulty settings, we really need to get our farming up and going uh, about as quickly as possible. And if possible, I wanna set up uh, farm tiles rather than planter boxes to help conserve on space and keep everything kind of the way that I want it to be. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give an order to dig out <clears throat> across here as well. This is where I think I'm gonna set up our initial barracks. And then over on this side is where I'm going to set up our, actually, uh, I think I want this to be one lower. This is where I'm going to set up our initial bathrooms. Uh, and then we'll set up a, um, a uh, pitcher pump right over here after we've kind of extended this ladder down. So we'll have this area dug out and we'll set up a pitcher, pitcher pump right here. Um, and I think we're just gonna set up our research kind of in one of these areas over here is the plan. And yeah, so stairway up here, uh, bathroom right here, barracks right here, research right here with you know a little hamster wheel and power and whatnot. And I think one of the things we're gonna do differently in this run as well is uh, in the previous run, we kind of oriented things left and right. 
where we had a lot of industry on the left and a lot of uh, farming on the right. And that worked okay, but because our industry end ends up generating a lot of CO2 and uh, CO2 is something that tends to fall, we wanna have a lot of stuff to, to capture and remove that CO2, uh, located in a position where it's gonna catch that CO2 as it's falling to the rest of the base. Uh, I think it's gonna be easier to just set up our industry sort of at the bottom of our base, let the CO2 dwell down there and uh, have our CO2 capture type stuff uh, either right above or right below where we set up our industry um, to prevent the CO2 from kind of getting around and uh, about our base. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier. I think uh, it might also be a little bit easier for sort of heat containment purposes. Um, instead of having some sort of big sort of jagged divide between our indu hot industrial sector and our cool farms like we did in our last Let's Play, if we have it separated uh, sort of by, by uh, level, then we can have sort of a hot basement area uh, that we can have layers of insulation between, and then we can have a sort of cooler oxygenated, air, oxygenated area up top. Um, and part of the reason why I think I like having the industry down below as well is because I think uh, we also want to keep a lot of our farm area oxygenated. Um, in the last Let's Play, we ended up putting our farms kind of down into the right, and so a lot of them didn't really have a lot of oxygen, so it was sort of difficult to farm those areas. And it made the sort of micromanagement of duplicates very difficult because duplicates would run to fetch food, but maybe they'd run out of breath on the way to go fetch the food, and uh, that, that in created some problems for us in terms of how efficient our duplicates were able to do their jobs. So if we have the farms in an oxygenated area as well, which means higher up in the base because oxygen is a lighter gas, then I think we're also gonna have a little bit more luck in, in that regard as well. So uh, let's go ahead and unpause and let them start getting to it. We're also going to start ranching sooner, I believe. That's part of our, part of our overall plan here. Um, we, we got into ranching pretty late in our last, last Let's Play, and I think it cost us in kind of a big way uh, because without having the ranches online fast enough, we ended up getting into problems where we um, didn't really have... Let's go ahead and pause here and queue up a ladder, and then we'll just have ladder going down here. Yeah. Um, one of the issues that we had was that because we didn't get our ranching up soon enough, um, we ended up having to actually terraform hot areas of the map and turn them into, into farmland, basically. And that's kind of tricky to do. Uh, am I ready to build a manual generator? What do I have in terms of resources? I have 250 kilograms of, of ore, shirt, power. Set up your manual generator right here, please. And so now we're going to, we're going to be more aggressive in terms of setting up our ranches. Oxygen is still going to be the really, really difficult thing that we need to get a handle on, um, but we are going to try and transition away from mealwood, which is dependent upon having 30 degree temperatures. We're going to try and transition away from that a lot quicker, and that should help us out uh, a lot more in our Let's Play as well. So those are the plans. Let's also give an order to build out ladder up to here. And I think I kind of want to just, ooh, there's a little bit of oxide over here, which is great. Any little bits of oxide we can get our hands on and a little bit right here. Okay, so maybe this isn't quite as, ooh, and there's another pool of water. All right, maybe this isn't quite as barren as it looked like before. Um, we still have, I mean, relatively speaking, we still have a pretty small amount of, of oxide on the map, but I, I'm the fact that there's any out here seems, seems pretty good to me. Let's also extend this out a little bit like so. And also while we're at it, let's go ahead and say that I want a battery hookup. Um, I think I'm gonna leave space to expand this into a jumbo battery. And so I'm gonna say a battery right here and then wire to connect this up like so. And then we'll connect it up to a research station and get going on that as quickly as possible. All right, let me check the stream and make sure I haven't uh, had my stream down this entire time. OBS has been cutting out every once in a while for me, um, which is kind of new. We basically had like several tens of hours of streaming with absolutely no problems. And in the past couple streams, it's cut out a couple times. It's basically disconnected from, from YouTube. So hopefully none of that happens this time. Maybe it's because of the time of day that I've been streaming. I don't know. Maybe I have it set to like reset or recheck something uh, really early in the morning. Um, that's possible because this is not my usual streaming time. 
But, uh, yeah. Hopefully no problems today. Alright, so we're making pretty good progress here. We're digging out this area over here. Uh, we're going to have the oxygen kind of flow over pretty slowly. That's fine. We're going to want to also go ahead and say pneumatic door right here. And then we're going to say furniture, cots, set up three cots right here and go ahead and cancel any of this work that we have left. Uh, I guess dig out this and then we'll be done. And we can set up another couple cots right over here. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna set up like a fourth cot, but we're gonna set this priority to four. Let them build that a little bit later. And yeah, okay. Looks like stream is working over. Yeah, we're gonna start over. Um, I think that we, I've kind of learned enough lessons. I basically ran a poll. A lot of people wanted me to start over. Um, a lot of people are just really unhappy with sort of restarting from previous saves. Which, uh, I don't know, was kind of a necessity given that if we restart fully on the same map, uh, we end up with like complete knowledge of what's on the map. And that gives us a lot of head start in terms of exploring the map and, and going to the right places. I didn't want to do that, uh, but that meant that I needed to kind of find a new map. Um, and because it's a new map that I, obviously, if I've seen it, then it doesn't really work very well. Um, uh, I need to kind of, I needed to get help from a friend to, uh, to set that up. But, uh, fortunately they had free time and, uh, were able to get to me really quickly. So everything's working out on that. End. And I think basically just, this is the most popular thing. This is kind of what people wanted. And I kind of want it too, because now we're actually going for the hardest possible difficulty settings. Like, we were on very hard difficulty settings before, don't get me wrong, uh, but now that we plan on accepting a new duplicant every single time one is offered to us, uh, the game is going to be on an entirely higher level, right? There's going to be no uh, care packages at all going our way, which is going to be pretty exciting. Let's go ahead and tile off here, set up a pneumatic door right here, and then we'll say medicine, wash basin, Let's set up a wash basin here, and we will set up a outhouse. Uh, I kind of want to set it up just right here. Yeah, I think we'll set up an outhouse right here. And we'll say priority six, priority six on these. Get them done a little bit faster than everything else. Let's also go to stations and say research station right here. And we'll say priority six on all of this stuff as well. And this one. Okay. So yeah, starting over. Um, rules on the previous rules on the previous one were basically we were aiming for 15 duplicates by cycle uh, 15 duplicates by cycle 50, 25 duplicates by cycle 100, and then 50 duplicates by cycle uh, 200. And we were able to accomplish that. Well, we came pretty close. We we had some deaths because I didn't quite understand the interactions with slime lung uh, and and low oxygen levels. So we, <laughs> we we had a couple deaths, which prevented us from getting to the 15 duplicates by cycle uh, 50. But we let's go ahead and switch this priority six this. Um, but we were able to kind of meet those numbers, and I thought that that was sort of a reasonable balance because this is like the first time. I mean. People have not played very much on these forest biome starts, and I kind of going in. I I, I did actually initially didn't have any plans on doing any sort of high population count thing, um, but I got sort of enough complaints that said that that would be too easy, <laughs> which was uh, I don't know a little bit like I guess yes, uh, and I and maybe that's for the better because basically everybody turned out to be make doing a sort of like um, oasis. Uh, high difficulty run, but not uh, by du by increasing the duplicate numbers. So I did sort of distinguish myself a little bit as a YouTuber in in doing the actual hardest challenge, whereas other people are doing sort of merely hard challenges, right? So I'm a very special snowflake, of course. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't want to do like print a new duplicate every three cycles right off the bat because I wasn't even sure it was possible. Right, like the, the the method where we're going to get our ox by which we're going to get our oxygen is like really roundabout, right? It, it's it's running a process just to get the polluted dirt and then using that polluted dirt to <laughs> provide our oxygen. So 
Um, having played a little bit now and had a little bit, having a little bit more experience on the forest biome uh, starts, I do think it's possible. And this needs to be priority six. Um, and so I think we can we can do it. And now I'm actually going to going to give it a shot. So uh, no, not that. Uh, what happened? Where's my research tree? Don't do this. Don't do don't do that. Uh, I want. Let's scroll out. They really made this kind of weird, the whole the whole research thing. Um, but yeah, let's go to meal prep. I want to get farm tiles and get these up right away. And then we're going to get ranching pretty soon after that. We have a lot of water to throw around now, so we don't have to be that picky with our research. Um, so we can kind of get away with some stuff. But uh, yeah. All right, so we're powering up this. We're going to have our research start getting done. This we can set at priority five four and our then only our dedicated researcher which is Ellie will go and do the research is the plan let's also go ahead and say that this is probably a higher priority than this stuff over here like we can just cancel this and let them kind of build up to here and then stop um, all right so we should have now a latrine and a barracks and we have our research set up and I want to manipulate the schedules a little bit. I want Ellie, I suppose, to be last to take her break. And I want, uh, let's say, Bubbles will go second to, to last. Something like that. Uh, yeah. All right, so Ellie gets started on our research. We supply this wash basin, and I might have to juggle people around just a little bit. In fact, let me check the schedule again. I think we will we'll move Ellie actually down here and Bubbles down here, and we'll have Ruby kind of stay on the original schedule. We'll try and spread them out just a little bit more, I think is the plan. All right, so this is supplied, this is supplied. We want to make this bed. Let's also go ahead and say furniture, cot. We'll set up another one right here. And then I think we want to start, ooh, there's more water here. Um, we want to start gathering as many seeds as we can. So any of these buried objects we want to start getting to, ideally. And I also want to start working on setting up what is going to be sort of the next step of things. Maybe do a little bit over here. Maybe not. Um, let's get out to here and and have a duplicate kind of just check out this area. Scout out our initial area a little bit more. There's some more ox light, which is great to see. This appears to be the boundaries of this more or less. But we probably have more area over here. And I guess this is the boundary here. All right, so this is boundary here, and then I guess this is the side that we want to explore more on. So let's cancel this. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, so we have our toilet set up. We have our wash basin set up. We have our barracks set up so they all have a place to sleep. Ooh, and there's a hatch, and this is going to be one of the big things that we change in this playthrough. We are going to start ranching hatches pretty much right away. Um... We, I think we, this is, we only start with one in our initial biome, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to get someone up to ranching as quickly as possible, and we're going to start ranching that hatch. And we'll probably start off with a, uh, a ranching room that has a natural floor, right? And we will be able to use that because um, uh, with the natural floor, uh, they will be able to burrow in at night, right? Did we... what happened here? Colony achievement earned. What do we complete? Okay, perfect. Uh, have at least one toilet in the colony and a bed for every duplicate. Sure. Pretty easy. Um, How are you doing on the research? Three out of 15. So what are you going to do? Supplying research. You're grabbing dirt. Okay, that's fine. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to be ranching hatches a lot more aggressively from the start. Try and transition away from mealwood as soon as possible. Because the mealwood, we need to keep temperature controlled, but the ranches we could actually have outside of our base. Uh, and real estate is going to become really hard to come by once we've got, you know, 50 duplicates in our base. Especially since with mealwood, um, we need basically uh, 
10 mealwood plants per duplicate, right? That, that takes up a lot of space. That's 30 tiles of space per duplicate just to supply their food with mealwood. Ranching, you know, again, is not much better in terms of space, but because the space is something that can be outside of your, your base, outside of the area that you're keeping climate controlled, uh, it ends up being a lot better for us. What do you have in your mouth, by the way? What exactly are you... You have a mealwood seed. Okay, sure. Plant that anywhere. I don't really care. So this is... Well, that's the extent of that. Um, yeah, so I think next step is we want to start digging out... We're going to have a setup here, which is probably going to be... Let's make it three high. And then we'll have one which is just too high, probably, over here. So let's have them dig out, just sort of as an exploratory thing, out to here. This is all green, and see what we have around our base. And then along the way, we'll have them dig up buried objects that they encounter. Yeah, and we'll try and grab as many seeds as possible. One interesting thing is that because, uh, like, I think I'm, I think we're going to accept duplicate deaths in this run. Um, that we're just going to stick to the policy of uh, printing out duplicates every time we can, so long as we're under 70. And so part of the challenge is going to be if we don't keep our duplicates alive, then we're not going to be able to be able to print out any care packages until we get the 70 duplicates, right? Um, so we'll probably be a little bit more cavalier in terms of allowing duplicate deaths. Um, although, I don't know, maybe we could make this like a no-death challenge. That's going to be tricky because, uh, I don't know, there are like weird things that happen in the game, like duplicates starving to death even though you have tons of food, because they get trapped in like little loops and whatnot. And, I don't know, that's how we basically had deaths previously, is we didn't understand that they kind of got, their AI got trapped in this cycle until, and they just stayed there until they starved to death. So I don't know, no death run is actually going to be pretty challenging because you're at least to some extent beholden to the AI and whether or not the AI is sort of functioning correctly. Um, but yeah, we're going to try and limit deaths, but I'm going to allow them, like I'm not going to, we're, we're never going to revert to a previous save. Uh, I think we're, we're kind of done with that. We're just going to roll with the punches basically and, uh, and see what comes. But uh, we'll be a little bit cavalier about duplicate deaths because also... Um, given that we're printing a new duplicate, okay, so this was planter boxes. I basically want farm tiles before I start doing a lot of stuff, I think. Because um, I think farm tiles will just give us a lot more more space than using the planter boxes. There's some advantages to using planter boxes in terms of um, you being able to put a tile underneath them, right? Uh, which you is kind of, like, like, having them off the ground is to some extent an advantage. But uh, otherwise, they just usually take up more space and have a larger decor of malice. Um, Ellie, how are you doing on your bladder? 94%. And schedule-wise, you are entering your downtime. Okay, perfect. So you're about to go use the bathroom, right? Going to use the toilet. Perfect. <laughs> Very happy for her grizzly meal. Yes. Happy to sleep. Fantastic. Go to sleep, Ruby. I think all of our starting, none of our starting duplicates have loud sleeper as a trait. Uh, so that's another advantage of staggering these guys. If any of them had loud sleeper, we would be sort of avoiding the scenario where they um, they woke each other up from due to sleep. The only thing we'll need to worry about in terms of uh, making sure they stay asleep is preventing any shine bugs from getting into these barracks areas. The pips are off and planting stuff. I kind of want to... I kind of want to get them to plant as many wild trees as possible is part of the goal. Um, getting our wild tree numbers up is pretty big because it allows us to uh, stall when we have to start domesticating trees in order to support our population. Um, and that means more free water, essentially, the longer we can, we can keep that going. Okay. So Ruby is going to be digging our sort of exploratory thing over here. We're going to need to encase basically the entire base with insulated tile at some point as well to prevent uh, the, the hot sand surrounding us from getting their heat in. But uh, yeah, we're probably going to be doing some pip ranching in addition to the, to the hatch ranching. It's kind of tricky starting ranching up early because uh, as far as like 
crops go. I think mealwood is, is sort of the worst in terms of time, but it's not that it's still not that bad. It's like 60 seconds per 1,000 kilocalories, roughly speaking. Um, but when you don't have your ranching skills leveled up at all, ranching is like 80 seconds per uh, per 1,000 calories that you get out of it effectively. And so, given that duplicate labor is pretty important early on, um, going to ranching early has its its problems. But like the payoff later is just going to be so huge as a result, right? That uh, switching to the Switching to ranching sooner means that we're going to avoid a lot of the, the heat issues that we get later on, especially since the sort of the problem that we got into that became really painful to solve was uh, we had sort of ran out of cold dirt. Um, there's only so much dirt in our starting biome, and once you've kind of used most of it or you've used all that, that wasn't in your industrial area to, um, to plant things, you run into problems where you're now resupplying your farms with hot dirt and that hot dirt uh, raises the temperature of the farms, and so you need a cooling system to distribute cooling to all of those, those farms, and that requires a lot of labor, and it meant that we were going to have to revert to a, like, a save that was like 20 cycles. Okay, so we have, we've basically plotted out the boundaries of our starting biome here, and everything else around this is gonna be hot. We have an extra bit of water over here, which is great. This is actually like, even this pool right here, has more water than our starting biome, our entire starting biome, biome did last time. So we have a water pool here, water pool here, water pool here. Um, and I guess we want to explore a little bit up to see if there's anything else up here. Sometimes these these little like areas, like maybe it could end right here. Maybe it continues on to like right here. The, the, the shapes that you get for your starting biome can be kind of, kind of weird. So I want to explore a little bit up there as well. Let's go ahead and say base, ladder, igneous rock. Let's do that and get them started on, on getting that done. Um, and yeah, the next thing we're going to start working on after we get our farms up and running, I think is going to be our, uh, our infinite bathroom. I think we're going to set up our infinite bathroom probably just right here, although we could set it up higher up. Higher up would mean we're more likely to keep it oxygenated over time. Yeah, maybe that's better to keep it higher up. Um, Probably not too much higher up though, because I just I kind of want to keep things centralized for the time being. But uh, yeah, probably right here is fine. We'll do something like that. They're trying to catch their breath. We are burning through our ox light pretty quickly here. This one's almost gone. This one's more than halfway gone. These two are ready to go. But that's basically it. So we're gonna have to start domesticating oxy ferns really quickly here, which means we kind of want to research all the way up to hydroponics, if possible. Um, so maybe we, in addition to this, set up a... Yeah, let's set up a another research station right over here. Uh, we're gonna dig this out and we're gonna have wire come across over to here. Should be fine. And we'll just set up our station right over there. Um, we'll uproot this mirth leaf eventually. I don't care too much right now. Oh, there's, a, there's more water down here as well. So we have actually four pools of water in our starting biome, which is pretty crazy. Um, sage hatches do offer the better conversion, but I don't really like that they eat dirt uh, because we're going to be relying a lot on dirt for our, uh, our ranching early on. So I, I think I'd rather still prefer to ranch normal hatches and feed them sand. Um, just to try and conserve on dirt. Because even though we have like just tons and tons and tons of dirt, um, we're sort of limited in terms of how much of it is cold. And if the hatches start eating cold dirt for whatever reason, right, if that's just what's closest to the resupply, then that's kind of worse for us, I guess. Um, I'm not gonna be super picky early on though. Like early on, I think we're just gonna be grabbing whatever hatches we can. Um, and we're probably just gonna have like a, a small ranch that, that sort of relies upon uh, that fact that hatches burrow themselves in at night to um, avoid overcrowding, or basically just limit the effects of overcrowding. Like, they'll still get overcrowded slash cramped, um, but only when they, they pop up at night. So they'll have, like, most of the cycle will be spent underground and, uh, and, and having the reproduction tick up. But, um, yeah, I don't think we want to go towards stone hatches just because getting access to sedimentary rock in order to achieve that is gonna be pretty difficult. I don't think there's a lot of sedimentary rock nearby us. 
Um, and I don't think really, really, we really care about getting uh, metal hatches, right, or smooth hatches, um, because our metal refining is going to be focused on um, getting steel, right? And because they can't deliver us steel, it's just not as not as useful. Um, like they're not bad if you have gold amalgam around and you can, if you want to make a bunch of things out of gold, that's kind of fine. But if you don't have access to that, then it's a little bit trickier. Let's go ahead and open up this, that way we can harvest these over here. And let's also give, uh, basically enable harvest to any and all of this. Uh, yeah, anything that isn't the hexalent right now, I'm perfectly fine auto harvesting. Yeah, so auto harvest all these, auto harvest this. I don't really want to grab the hexalent right away because it'll just start going stale and I don't really need it right away. But everything else we're going to say auto harvest like so. And because we have a duplicate who is uh, prioritized on farming, they should go around and grab this stuff. But yeah, I want to grab as much lumber and whatnot as possible as we as we go around here. Uh, because that lumber is ultimately going to be fed into our ethanol industry. And so the sooner we start harvesting lumber, the better. Which is kind of why I want to dig out here and grab this these arbitrary branches. Get that settled. What are you planting there, little pip? Mealwood? Sure. I can live with that. If they go around planting mealwood seeds, it's not great, but it's not the worst thing in the world either. Right, so we start digging out through here, and then we'll get to this uh, arbitrary, and then we'll be able to start uh, harvesting those branches. And yeah, how are we coming along on our research? 16 out of 20. So one of the next things that I think I want to do is I just want to start converting large swaths of area to farmland. And this is going to be, I think, one of the first ones. We're just basically going to replace all of these tiles with farm tiles and start farming it up. Because um, you can already see that we've fallen a pretty good amount in terms of our food supplies. We have a lot of hexalent that we can dig up, so we're not like ready to die. But uh, when you consume 6,000 kilocalories a day uh, across three duplicates, that's that's a lot, right? You only start off with 16,000 kilocalories. We've got we've got work to do. Base ladder igneous rock. Let's also go ahead and tell them that they can start working on just a little ladder system right here and then we can actually finish out this uh, the rest of this barracks if we like to accommodate more dupes I probably have to stop streaming in a few hours to start getting ready for stuff but uh... hmm is it in the dark I should check the light levels. Huh. Uh, yeah, because I guess it doesn't reach out all the way here. Yeah, I probably should have flipped that around and had the manual generator over here to get that extra speed. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, mainly we're just relying on the fact that Ellie has 10 science, which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, 10 science means 400% research speed. But yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. I should have had this flipped around, and should have had the uh, the manual generator over here, or the manual generator over here. That way, the the they could get the light bonus. Where's light? Uh, yeah, we're outside of the range. Uh, good point. So we've already made a mistake, but that will happen. And research-wise, we want to now work on. It's weird that employment just provides a water cooler now. There's no jobs board. But we want to start working towards advanced research, I think. Get the supercomputer and anything else. I think that's it. We need the, we need advanced research before we can really do a lot of stuff. Like, we need the water suit if we're going to make the infinite bathroom. So, I don't think there's really... Yeah, I don't care about coal generators or anything like that. We're never going to use wood burners. Those are Those are really bad. Uh, and we want to get to ranching, I think, pretty quickly here. We'll start ranching almost right away, because it won't take much labor early on to start in on the ranching, because it'll only be like one hatch. But if we get to a stable of like six hatches, then once we start saying, hey, we want to exponentially grow our, our uh, ranches, then we'll have a lot, we'll have a larger starting population, right? We'll be like uh, three generations ahead of the curve as a result. 
So, food, farm tile, dirt. I basically just want to replace all of this. Um, I guess we won't replace this. We'll kind of leave that there in case I want to make a door and limit uh, access to the farmland. But yeah, all the way out to here and then we'll start working on setting up. As soon as we have a miner who can dig out granite, uh, we'll start working on setting up um, our insulation in all these areas. But for now, how many farms is this? This is 31. Okay, so this should be just enough for our three starting duplicates. And then we'll for like we'll start up another layer right above it or so. Um, I think that'll work. Bathrooms. I'm not sure where, where I want to put at this point, actually. But we're going to set up an infinite bathroom somewhere as well. I think... Hmm. I don't know where I want to set up the infinite bathroom. I kind of want to set it up a little bit further away from the farms. Like maybe right over here would be better. Somewhere where it doesn't disturb this tree, I guess. But... So, like... Uh, maybe down one from there. We could just widen this out and replace these uh, cots, move them up, and put the bathroom down there. Or I guess we could just replace this area once we're done. Yeah, that sounds fine. We'll just replace this area and kind of have an inter inter uh, intermediary room like right over here to kind of distance it from the farmland. Because the, uh, the duplicates will, like their wastewater is going to be at uh, their body temperature, which is going to be higher than what we want for our uh, for our farms. It's going to be like 37 degrees Celsius when we want to keep our farms at 30 degrees Celsius. So it'll very, very, very slowly warm up over time. Plus the water sieve generates a little bit of heat. So keeping our bathrooms away from our farms is going to be um, not super important, but it's going to be just helpful. Like might as well, I think. Let's just have them explore pretty much all the way up here, I think, is the, the next step. So we'll start getting our farms up and running, and then uh, we are going to start working on, I think, I don't know, maybe the exploration reveals something, but I think it's going to be more farms and then a ranch somewhere. We also want to start a pip ranch somewhere, but the pip ranches are probably just going to be like little opportunistic things. So we really just want to use the pip ranches to... Um, to grab ourselves some uh, some more seeds if possible. Like we want them to go and nibble on these trees and get some acorns for us, stuff like that. This I think we're gonna keep as a too high room. So what I'm kind of willing to do is just say base, tile, and we could set up farms down here as well. Um, is this the level that I want farms to be on? You know, for now, let's just say that this is gonna be more barracks, I think. And let's go across like this. And we'll probably have another one right here. So let's just do this, just so we can get over to this area right here. And we'll dig out this. And then we're going to dig out this area for this tree and harvest this branch and get to those areas there. But these two things I think I know I want to do. And this, we want to plant a mealwood plant. Yes. So we have someone who's specialized in farming. They should get to that. Uh, above their other tasks. And yeah, we will just start copy settings and get our farms up early. And you have not been fertilized and also atmosphere. Wait, why atmosphere? Okay, never mind. You're good. Yeah, get our farms going up right away. Keep our food supplies high. Because we are fairly soon going to print a new duplicate. We have basically a little bit less than one cycle left on printing our next duplicate. We have four beds set up, so we're good on that end. Okay. And yeah, just a whole line of farms. That'll supply our initial three duplicates, and we'll set up another line of farms, maybe a little bit higher. We've burned through... Ooh, there's some more oxalate up here, too. So we want to we want to explore up here just really to, to reach this, this extra oxalate as well. Yep, we're taking every dupe. Every dupe. So every three cycles, we take a new duplicate. Uh, up to 70, and then uh, if if at 70 duplicates we're still kind of going strong in terms of game performance, like we're not really encountering a lot of lag, then maybe we consider taking every dupe up to like 105 and have three of every duplicate, something like that. 
but I can't I can't promise anything beyond 70 because even 70 is probably going to be pushing it in terms of lag for my machine. Um, like this computer is, I don't know, like five years old at this point. It, it was a really good computer for its time, but it's still probably I don't know. They've done they've done a lot of work on optimiz optimizing the game, so it's not like before where you had like 30 duplicates and the game started chugging. Um, and they're, they're doing even more things today on that stuff, so it's it's possible that I could, you know, open up multi-threading for this or something like that. Like, there's maybe there's some change in the, the, the files that I can do that will improve performance. But um, we'll see. We'll see. No promises on going above 70, but 70 is going to be definitely the goal. I think we can do 70. I kind of I kind of went on a, um, a debug map and tested to see how things were going once I had 70 duplicates and it was it was okay so I think we're gonna be I think we're gonna be fine up to 70 that's my guess um with distributed dupes no exceptions no exceptions so even if they offer read fiber we're not gonna take it so every we're skipping all the care packages the only time we can accept a care package is once we have that 70 duplicate number then we can start accepting care packages so we, we want to keep as many duplicates as we can alive, right? Because that's going to determine when we can start getting our other resources. There's probably read fiber somewhere around the map. Like, we're not strictly limited because um, Oasis does have both... Also, what are we doing on research? 7 out of 20. Okay. Fair enough. Um, there are swamp biomes. Like, I actually specifically asked if there were swamp biomes on this map, because I don't think our last map had swamp biomes, or if it did, they were really hidden somewhere good. Um, I, I have been told there are swamp biomes on this map, uh, on like on this specific map, not, not just Oasis in general, so we will have, I think, reed fiber, and uh, there's also presumably caustic biomes, so we will have drecos to, to, to uh, shear as well. So we will be able to get reed fiber somehow, right? We're not We're not, like locked out of going to space until we get the 70 duplicates. We're probably not going to space before we get the 70 duplicates, but we're not, like, we're not hard locked behind anything um, because of the conditions, I think. I don't know. Like, again, once we have 70 duplicates, we can begin accepting uh, care packages according to these rules that I'm making up for myself. Um, so we will eventually be able to get all the resources that we want, right? As long as we're keeping people alive. So I kind of like that as a, as a restriction. What else do we need to do here? Probably dig up a little bit of Hexalent. Not too much, but just a little bit to top off our food supplies. So we have less than a day left. Uh, stress is going up because of morale requirements. Sleeping, minus 20%. Sure. Stress. Huh. Why is stress at 11% for some of these guys? What was causing stress? I don't know. Probably full bladder at some point is my guess as to why stress ticked up. Basically, any stress they get just sticks with them. But we're going to print out a new duplicate that's going to send stress going back down. So it's not the... Like, as long as we're not... I'm just curious as to why we're having stress. There's not like some little bit of water that they're walking over, right? No soggy feet debuff. It's probably just full bladders and stuff like that, or low oxygen areas, is my guess. All right, yeah. So let's finish up our layer of farms here and then start working on another one. And then we probably want to start up ranching as soon as we have the tech for it. So we're researching our supercomputer. We're going to build that. And then I think we go probably ranching just straight up next. Either that or hydroponic. Well, mm. another thought is we need to start getting our oxygen up and going. And that means getting plumbing. Well, plumbing helps. Plumbing and hydroponic farms for oxy ferns. We don't strictly need them, but it would save us a lot of, a lot of labor to have that set up, I think. So I'm kind of tempted to do that. I think, hmm, we also don't have a great way to set up a pump in this area here. Because the way it's, the way it is, we kind of came in from the top, but there was also a large gap between the water level there. We basically want to 
pump water into hydroponic farms and start setting up domesticated oxy ferns as quickly as possible because again we just don't have like we've burned through pretty much all of our starting oxygen here and I, we can we have some little bits of oxalite around here that we can tap into but it's not a whole lot that we've encountered yet right so we probably want to start gathering up oxy ferns and putting them domesticated somewhere to start getting our oxygen lo levels up otherwise they're just going to fall like a stone we started like that was a, that was a good thing of the previous map i think was that we actually had a pretty good amount of oxalite right like we went 10 cycles hard printing duplicates before we really had any issues with oxygen of course once you ran out of oxalite it felt like a rock right but um it was just enough time to kind of get our industry up and going here we're gonna have to domesticate a bunch of oxy ferns and take advantage of the extra water that we have in this play uh but okay cool research done let's work on let's work on plumbing yeah let's work on plumbing um, we're going to need that for sanitation and stuff anyways. We're going to need it for, uh, presumably, hydroponic farms. I think we go for ranching first, though. Let's start ranching hatches pretty much. Well, we're going to be a ways away on the skills, aren't we? They're only halfway through getting their next skill point. It's going to take two skill points, right? Bubbles here is going to have to go improve farming and then critter ranching before we can start that. So we'll go hydroponic farms next, I think. And start getting the oxy ferns up. And then after that, we actually, if we still don't have the skill points sort of ready to go, I think we're gonna go for our infinite bathroom before anything else. And start getting that extra water. Because that extra water is gonna be pretty helpful as well. That does mean that we need to have digging that way we're hard digging that way we can breach uh we can breach somewhere over here or maybe up here or somewhere basically we need to breach through the granite and gather some sand to act as filtration medium for our water sieve uh, before we can really have the infinite bathroom up and running but that's the only thing we really need in all that uh also where are liquid reservoirs We'd want to have one of those in our bathroom setup. Um, improved plumbing. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to have to do basically this, all four of these after plumbing, I think. Let's go ahead and give an order to uproot this at priority six. I want to I have my supercomputer set up relatively soon. I mean, it's not a rush because even after we start doing the research for um, uh, for hydroponic farms slash ranching or any advanced research, right? We're we're still going to have basic research that uh, that Ellie's going to need to uh, do before we're set to go. But let's go ahead and set up this bad boy. Boom. Power, wire, hook this up like so. Let's also go to schedule here and kick everybody down a little bit. Let's move Ellie down to here, Bubbles down to here, and Ruby down to here. And basically just squeeze an extra couple hours of labor out of all of them. And also make room for new duplicates coming into the system. Auto harvesting some mealwood, that's fantastic. Anything, any free stuff like that, we definitely want. How are we doing on seeds, actually? We are out of seeds. So we also want to start digging out more of these little things over here. Um, any other really easy to hit buried objects? Not really. Let's go and say base, ladder. Let's run this the rest of the way down. That way they can access this meal wood and any of these branches. And let's also give an order to dig out here. Get those. I don't really want to dig out this. But any seeds we can grab our hands on. Because we need to fill out this entire row just to feed our initial set of duplicates. Yeah, let's give orders to dig out over here. Dig out here. 
Uh, we will... Buried objects, buried objects, buried objects. We can also start digging out more area to get to more places and more buried objects. There's one right here. Um, let's hold off on that for now because I want to break open to too many places too early just because we don't we don't have the the oxy fern set up yet so we don't have we don't have a way to, to replace oxygen yet right the more areas we dig out the the thinner we're spreading our oxygen throughout all this I guess I'm also just kind of automatically dumping a bunch of aluminum down here that's probably a good thing because this is a little bit aluminum light I guess yeah like, we have a lot of aluminum over here. I'll, I think I'm fine with aluminum falling down. One bis big disadvantage of like having a, one big central stairwell like this is that when they drop something, it drops all the way down, basically. Alright, time for a new dupe. So it's Devin or Banny, and uh, Banny is clearly the winner here. <laughs> she has Diver's Lungs, which is fantastic, and she's not anemic, which is absolutely terrible. Athletics minus five is brutally bad. I mean, plus three agriculture, plus three strength, yeah, that's fine. But uh, Banny, welcome aboard. Schedule-wise, what are we putting Banny on? Um, best schedule for Banny is right here. Perfect. Oh, and what were her Let's go to skills here. What do you what do you do? Okay, so we can have a we can have a hard digger right off the bat, which is fantastic. So this will allow us to dig out granite. And Ruby presumably will also go into hard digging once she has her uh, skill point earned up, but yeah. I mean, the other option is we take improved carrying, something like that, but I think we're going hard digging here. Get our get our granite digger right away. That helps us with a lot. Because then we can start getting up our insulation pretty much right away. We can also dig out... We can give an order to dig out this. That way this tree... I mean, this tree's halted due to body temperature anyways, I guess. Let's ignore that then. Okay, so this area extends out a little bit more over here. Research time. We want... Uh, we're a ways away from getting our skill points for ranching, so let's just go with hydroponics. Set up hydroponic farms for some oxyferns. Get going on that, I think, is a good idea. We'll need some awkward thing to set up a bunch of... Um, we we'll need some awkward way to set up some uh, uh, missing research station yet, because this hasn't been built yet. Sure, that's fine. Uh, we'll need some awkward way to set up a pump over here. Although we could set up in one of these other pools. That would be fine. I think we're okay just doing this. Yeah, I think that's fine. We can set up a pump, like, right here. Have some awkward wire connecting it. We'll be okay. We can tile over it once we're sort of set up here and put our put our infrastructure right above it. That would be fine. Yeah, plumbing, liquid pump. All right, you can reach this, right? They can stand on here and reach here. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Yeah, that should be okay. And then this water level, we'll need to kind of breach up here, I think. So let's give an order to dig out that. And... How close is she on her skill points? She should be pretty close. 1937 at 3,038. So once we have... Once we have Ellie ready to level up, we'll get her to work on uh, the supercomputer and have her research the hydroponics, and then we'll be able to set up our oxy ferns in a way that doesn't require a ton of labor. That's the plan. Yeah, we have a lot of water now, 
Uh, it's not like before where you know we had 15 tons of water to start off with and mushing was just not a not an option. We could we could do some mushing. I think we can avoid a lot of that though. I mean, I, I, like obviously we need to find a lot more seeds to keep that going. But we have a bunch of hexel we can dig up for the moment, so I think we're okay in terms of our food supplies. But yeah, mushing is like making mush bars is now an actual option that we didn't have in our previous let's play because there just there was barely enough water to do all the research that we needed to do in the previous let's play but yeah i think we're going to set up industry kind of right at the bottom here let's go ahead and dig out some hexalent let's give orders to dig out that let them do that at their leisure maybe we dig out some more over here so where are our buried objects? More seeds is also what we want. We have decently high farming skill on uh, Ruby, is it? Not Ruby. Um, not Banny either. Uh, was it Catalina? I've already forgotten the name of our, our last duplicate and they, they're hiding from me. Bubbles. Bubbles is farming, right? Agriculture 3, so she has a plus 10% seed chance, which I understand to mean that she has basically a 20% seed chance drop, right? It's a base 10% chance, and then I think it just adds 10% on top of that. I don't think it's a, I don't, I don't think it's like a plus one point uh, <laughs> chance is my, is my take on things. Let's go ahead and say plumbing, liquid pipe, igneous rock. Let's get this up, and then let's also say power, wire, Let's get this up. Let's, uh, yeah, and let's say base, tile, igneous rock. We'll just build right over here, I think, is the plan. Uh, did you complete all your research for agriculture? You have not. Okay, cool. We'll need to switch to another uh, research job or another, like we'll, we'll basically start researching our um, our infinite bathroom type stuff once uh, she's finished up the basic research for the hydroponics. That way she isn't spending time just waiting until her skill point kicks in. But uh, otherwise we're pretty much set. Let's dig out this. Uh, let's actually cancel that. Let's, well, yeah, sure. Dig out this, let the, let the aluminum fall down to here. What are you doing? You're disinfecting it as she's using it. Okay. Uh, probably not the most productive thing you can do, but whatever. Washing hands. Great. Okay. And I guess Banny's sleeping here because they decided not to build this one. They built this one instead. That's fine with me. <coughs> Um, this seed will not have, guaranteed will not have a cool slush geyser. Um, I, I don't know what other geysers it will have. Presumably, I, I, like, there's, there should be nothing, like, really game-changing right outside our base. Cool slush geysers being the one that kind of defeat the whole purpose of, of doing a, a, <laughs> a oasis, basically. It's like, oh, why, did we not, huh. So we don't have access to this. Deconstruct this, then. Get the wire built, and then we'll... Yeah, I guess they, they need to build this part of the wire here. I did this in the wrong order. Deconstruct this, we'll build it again, get the wire done, and then we can have things go over here. But, um... What was I saying? Uh, yeah, we'll tile this off. Uh, we should have other geysers around the map, but I, we definitely don't have one of every geyser, because I know for sure we don't have cool slush geysers. Um, but... We should um, have a decent range of other stuff, I presume. We also have a ton of volcanoes around the map. So I know we have volcanoes and magma channels. Uh, and we also have slime molds. So we have, which I guess are, come to think of it. <laughs> um, slime molds are actually probably a big benefit to us because they provide us like a, a source of, of oxygen ultimately if we really need it. All right, tile, igneous rock, tile this up again. So we have slime molds, we have magma channels, and we have volcanoes. And I think that's it uh, for the special traits. 
Everything else should be basically normal. And then it's been checked for me that we don't have uh, cool slush geysers. Uh, there's probably runaway volcanoes, magma channels, stuff like that. There's almost certainly is. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure part of the reason it was given to me was that it has it has some massive heat leak somewhere. Kind of like the last one where we had a massive heat leak in, in the north and a massive, massive heat leak in the south. Or just kind of both pressing towards our base. There's probably something like that out there lurking for us. I don't know. It's possible that... <laughs> Around cycle 100, we'll just have this massive wall of super heat, hot steam advancing towards our base. Because it's this has just been a, a series of steam explosions somewhere, somewhere on the map due to an exposed volcano. That's possible. But again, we're, we're setting things up so that we can, in theory, survive entirely within our starting biome. So, uh, <laughs> ideally, we will have the tools necessary to defeat whatever crazy heat thing is coming down the pipe at us. Ideally. In practice, I don't know. But in theory, we, we should be able to get there. Yeah, last seed was really rough. This one is uh, probably not as rough. Although, I don't know. I mean, we're really, like, again, all of our oxide is gone at this point. So we're, like, our oxygen levels are going to start falling. Speaking of that, do we have... Okay, we're still waiting on the agriculture. Um, let's see if we can zoom in without messing things up. We kind of want to set up our hydroponic farms before we do any of this other stuff. Let's also go ahead and say power, manual generator, set this up here, set up a battery right here, and then wire up. Um, let's just wire up like so. Leave this disconnected for now, and then we can reconnect it whenever we want. And we'll have plumbing, liquid pipe, We'll have this basically supply some uh, hydroponic farms with oxyferns. We'll start topping up our oxygen, because that's like the challenge of, of the starting biome for this one, I think, is that there's basically no oxalite. Like we, uh, again, we, even with these extra bits we found, this is, this looks like it, right? So like five bits here, another three here. So only eight tiles of oxalite, if I'm seeing this correctly, but uh, outside of our initial starting five, which is very little. We already see our oxygen levels falling off way sooner than we did last time. The flip side, though, is that we actually have water, right? Like last time we started off with 15 tons of water. Here we have many times that. So we're going to be able to domesticate these oxy ferns and, and keep going. But... Uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's a trick to this this one. There's like no oxalite. That's why that's part of why this was chosen for me, I think. <laughs> Cuz we're already running out of oxygen. And we don't even have How close are you to She's about okay. She's She's most of the way there. About 4 fifths of the way there to getting her skill points so she can operate a supercomputer. Let's continue to copy settings across here. Get our farms all filled out. Yeah, and then we, as soon as we have the skill points, we're going to start up ranching. And just kind of, I don't know. We, hmm, we might not be able to do it right away. We want to do it early, but we also really need to set up our ethanol industry, which is going to provide the oxygen for our base. Because we'll run out of water for oxyferns eventually, and also we just won't have enough oxyferns to provide oxygen to everybody. If you just keep going, right? The wild oxy ferns will get some work done for a while. Um, let's also go ahead and give out some orders to dig out this hexalent. I think that's fine. Growth halted atmosphere. Sure. Uh, let's go ahead and fix that a little bit. Also, there's a buried object here, so we should nab that. Attribute increase. Construction. Cool. Construction is going to be pretty useful for us here early on. Copy settings over here. All right, yeah. I think we'll set up the oxy ferns. I mean, I don't know. We could set them up just like right over here. We want to have them below. That way all the CO2 can fall to the base. But also that means that we just have to run this pipe down further. That's not that big of a deal. But 
we're probably going to be able to reuse that pipe later anyways. Yeah, I talked myself into it. So let's go ahead and say plumbing, liquid pipe. We're going to run this. It's like all the way down. And we'll set up some oxyfern type stuff right over here. I guess maybe we also dig out a little bit further down. Ladder, igneous rock, something like this. I, mean, I guess we could put them at the very bottom, but I kind of want to start setting up my industry right at the bottom. Come to think of it, maybe I start planning out my industry a little bit. We probably... I mean, we want to be able to get to this water, but temperature-wise, we're already seeing things start to creep in. Yeah. I need to think about that. We can, we can be pretty aggressive in terms of carving out an area for our industry. This is 70.5. Ooh, this gets, there's kind of a cold patch over here. This is a little bit, this is above where we want to be. Um, we have an oxy fern stranded all the way out over here. Yeah, we'll need to get to this at some point. That should be fine. Oh, and research. You're done on this. Let's get you started on... Sanitation or filtration? Um, maybe sanitation. I mean, all this is going to be necessary ultimately, right? Yeah, this is too sanitation. There's no particular order. It's all just going to be working towards the, the infinite bathroom for us. Yeah, we're not going to have enough space, though, to do that is the problem, right? Also, just because it takes 18 cycles for a wild plant to, to like a wild tree to grow its trunk, right? And then another 18 cycles for it to actually have a branch deliver any sort of lumber. Um, because we're printing out a new duplicate every three cycles, we're going to be in a pretty rough spot if that's like, if we're just going pure wild, right? So we're going to need to domesticate a pretty good amount. And of course, just the oxy ferns aren't going to provide enough oxygen for the people that we have uh, wild. We're just, we're too limited on that front. And we can't get any more oxy fern seeds, unfortunately. There's no way to get pips to get you more. So we're going to have to, let's also do this. So we're going to have to domesticate pretty early on. And the idea is to set up the industry so that we can, uh, so that we can get the polluted dirt out of it, right? And the polluted dirt will be our source of oxygen from the whole ethanol industrial chain. I feel like my electrolyzer being at 65 degrees Celsius is making my 10 degrees Celsius filtered cool slush water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, uh, your electrolyzer room, your electrolyzer will have a minimum output temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, right? So, um, basically, you're, you're kind of, you're creating heat if you run... Uh, hotter water or colder water through there, right? Like all your cool slush water, all that cooling just gets lost. Um, so I actually have a video on this, uh, setting up counterflow, basically a counterflow heat exchanger for um, for electrolyzers. And the idea is that you uh, you have the, the incoming water exchange heat with the outgoing oxygen, right? And so you're able to, to cool down your base using the excess, because there's a difference in the specific heat capacity between uh, the water and the oxygen, right? The water has a lot more specific heat capacity. You're able to get a lot of cooling out of the system that way. That's also the basis for, uh, Brothgar made a video on uh, cooling down your base using ethanol distilleries, where the basic idea was that he was sourcing all of his lumber from uh, wild trees. And so he didn't need to recirculate the polluted water into um, into domesticated arbor trees. And so as a consequence, you can take that, that uh, polluted water that's coming out at 40 degrees from your uh, petroleum generators, send that through a water sieve and then to an electrolyzer and basically have the same idea that you're going to use, um, you're going to use the difference in specific heat capacity between the oxygen and the water to, uh, to, to net yourself some cooling for your base. We're not going to be able to do that in this in this uh, let's play just because we are going to need to uh, send the um, the polluted water into our arbor trees, right? Um, we're going to have to have domesticated arbor trees to keep our ethanol industry going, to keep generating polluted dirt, 
um, which means we aren't right. We we can heat up that water, but we need to do that very carefully because we we need it to be consumed by the trees basically, and the trees have to be kept under forty degrees Celsius. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind that you want to ideally be sending like 70 degree or hotter water to your electrolyzers uh, and then cool down the resulting oxygen. It's going to be a lot easier to cool down the oxygen than it is to uh, uh, than it is to uh, to cool down the water, basically. It used to be that like there were a lot of minimum temperatures in the game um, and that was actually the basis for a lot of sort of the tricks of the game. Let's go ahead and set up another outhouse right here. And then I think we're okay on this. Set up a second outhouse. That way I don't have to empty this one very quickly. Research-wise... Yeah, how close are you? You're pretty close. Uh, we're still just going to have you do filtration, I guess. Work on that one. And where's insulation in all this? Insulation is over here. We also want to be working towards that. That way we can insulate, put a, put a layer of insulation around our base is part of the plan. Yeah. Okay. I think we're set on that front. We'll start working on the hydroponics right after that. And we'll just set up... Um, we also want to consider where I'm setting up the rest of the stuff. Uh... I think we're just going to set up hydroponic farms right here. Right across here. Sounds good. And then we can dig out across here. Once we're done, get to these trees. Uh, let them grow as much as they need. Probably one, two, three, four. Probably just uproot this as well. Yeah, I think that works fine. Yeah, so that's going to be the layer. Let's go ahead and say food. Oh, I don't have that done. What am I talking about? Uh, but we're going to set up the hydroponic farms then, and then we will be good to go in terms of gathering up a bunch of oxyferns and tossing them down there. We need to start doing this quickly, though, because we're getting low on oxygen, as you can see. We can punch through some of these areas. Like We probably want to give an order to dig out through here, just so we can free this pip up and uh, get this, this stuff going to us. We also probably can just punch through here at this point and get this going. And then we're buried objects. We have two right here. Um, let's give an order to dig out across here. I think that's fine. And then open up like that. Also, have we reached... Okay, so this is the top of this. Yeah, so there really isn't that much oxalate at all in this starting area. That's fine. We'll have the oxyferns up soon. And we have a good amount of water to supply them with. And I think... Uh, yeah, we want to get up ranching soon after that. Ranching, infinite bathroom, and our ethanol industry are the three high priorities right now after getting the oxyferns going. These pips aren't really doing anything useful at the moment. They are all basically just grabbing mirth leaves and whatnot and tossing them somewhere. Or like mealwood, which I don't really care about. Uh, yeah, and I don't like you doing that. That's, that's not, that's not cool. Dude, I'm planting stuff here. Go away. Two visits remaining. They should be using this outhouse now once this gets built. Let's give a priority six on replacing the dirt on that. Or basically supplying it with dirt the first time. Yeah, and so we'll go, we'll go oxy ferns, and then I guess infinite bathroom, because we won't have the skill points for, for ranching yet anyways. So where are we on research? One out of twenty, sure. As soon as as soon as she gets the skill point, we're gonna switch her over to the hydroponics. We're not gonna we're not gonna wait or anything. Cause we have a whole chain of things we need to do to get our infinite bathroom up and going, but we're one research away from having the, the oxy ferns going, so it's gonna be right, it's it's quicker to get to and it's a higher priority. 
Yeah, input hot uh, H2O into the electrolyzer. Yeah, so the... It, it, it used to be fixed output temperatures, right? So water sieve used to always output at 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, carbon skimmer also output at 40 degrees Celsius, right? There were a lot of fixed temperatures. And uh, I think the reason why they, they do it that way is that they, they, want to, they want to kind of create heat problems for your base, right? They want to say, as you transition to these mid-game technologies, we want you to also have to deal with this like new threat because that's, I think, a lot of the growth halted pressure. Yeah, see, this is this is not good. We don't want this, these pressure issues here. Um, I think that's a lot of the sort of the, the game design of, of Oxygen Not Included is really focused on, like, you start off with a fixed stock of something, like algae or a fixed number of oxy ferns or, like, some limited resource, and eventually you need to work and get around that limited resource skill point earned ellie you are ready to do advanced research perfect and we are going to switch you over now to agriculture um but yeah they, they, they want you to like they give you a fixed resource um and then they say eventually you need to move away from that fixed resource and when you do it then introduces new elements of the game like having to cool down your base and stuff like that so i think that's a large part of what the uh the push with electrolyzer or the way the electrolyzers are designed what that what that's intended to do it does like create some counterintuitive stuff though like it, from a gameplay perspective it it probably sets up the challenges in, a, in a, like a logical progression or like it, it challenges you with new things as the game progresses rather than all at once um but it does lead to like counterintuitive stuff and they've kind of they've they've done a little bit better with that in terms of like the, the counterintuitive physics breaking stuff um like for example with the removal of fixed output temperatures right um but i don't know they, they have to strike a balance right between gameplay and and, and things that that just intuitively make sense <laughs> the game is not a a, a science of purely scientific thing Yeah, uh, we could do solar panels. I don't know. It's a lot of work to set up. I think um, probably what we want to be doing once we're sort of working towards power solutions is probably steam turbines. Like, we're, we're on a map where the big challenge is heat everywhere. To have something that generates power for you and deletes heat is, is kind of a win-win, right? So... Especially since the map is just like full of volcanoes. We're probably, for our renewable power source, is going to be working with, with steam turbines. But um, the solar is pretty interesting. I don't know. Like, I, I'm i kind of interested in, in the massive shine bug thing. Because like a big shine bug ranch also has other benefits. Um, decor is one of them, but the main thing is eggshells. Just having like this free supply of eggshells for your steel industry. Um, I'm not sure... Because we're going to go pretty hard into hatch ranching, I think. I'm not sure how vital it's going to be to have more eggshells. But um, I've always kind of been interested in setting up something like that. Because it, it's really low maintenance, right? Like, it's it's basically just set and forget. Um, kind of like a, a Paco Aquarium, basically. We're not going to have access to Pacus for a while if there are Pacus on the, on the map. But, um, yeah. Infinite source of eggshell and meat with very little... Uh, labor put into it is pretty ideal but we're like we're so many steps away from there and i think just yeah like other other things are gonna gonna take precedence building lacks resources supercomputer lacks water but there's a look you're talking about there's a usually it pops this up when there's like no way to obtain those resources but there's clearly a pitcher pump with available water in it I guess it's because there's no actual packaged water yet, right? I don't have like some mopped up water sitting around the map, so it's giving me that, that message. Copy settings here. Okay, so as soon as we have the seeds, we should be basically good to go in terms of, well, I mean, we still need to put up another 10 mealwood plants to sustain our fourth duplicate that we printed out. But um, we should be doing okay on farms. Like we're getting there slowly and the more farms we have the faster we're going to generate seeds as well so 
it's not going to be too big of an issue to expand things out. How close are you to getting done? You're very close. Okay. Because we want to set up these hydroponic uh, farms pretty quickly here. And I'm tempted to just start digging into here right away. Let's give an order to dig out there. Um, and we're going to start snatching up. We're going to start snatching up oxy ferns. Anywhere we can get them. Um, and start domesticating them. These wild ones that are near the bottom are probably the lowest priority. These ones here at the top are the ones that we're going to want to start off with. Because they're just not going to have a lot of CO2 around them. And this one's doing okay, right? But like this one's already halted. This one, eh, this one's doing okay as well. There's like enough up here, but I want to move them down here. we will probably have a row of like 16 oxyferns, something around there. I think we can get that done. There's probably, how many oxyferns do we have total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's a larger number of oxyferns than usual, I think. I think like 15 or 16 is more standard. So we've got like an extra two oxyferns, which is nice. Great. Okay, you're done on that. Where are we at on skills? Um, Bubbles is not even through her first one. She's got about 10% more to go on that. So we're probably not getting ranching up and going yet. Um, instead, I don't think I want any of these power system type, type things. We're going to need to work on those for our ethanol industry eventually. But I think we want to start working on the rest of our infinite bathroom setup. I think we're going to start up infinite bathroom before we start insulating the base. So let's get the water sieve because that's pretty pr pretty critical to all this. Let's get that. Um... Where do I want to set up the bathroom? I kind of talked about this a little bit, thinking about setting it up right here, but maybe we set it up somewhere else. Maybe. One moment. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of fine just setting it up here. We'll replace some of this stuff. We have, we have room to, to set things up and then kind of deconstruct some things. All right. So we're harvesting our first crop of mealwood. Feels great. We have an idle dupe. No, 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 no. Ruby. We've got way too many things to do. Um, copy settings here. I want that one thing done. And then let's also give an order to dig out. Oh, uh, that requires granite, huh? Um, well, food, hydroponic farms. Let's get this set up. Actually, let's remember that we want to do this. Um, yeah, we'll have it like this. Just across like so and start setting up some oxy ferns. We can also go ahead and, yeah, let's also go ahead and say plumbing, liquid pipe igneous rock, connect up all this. Looks good. Harvesting our mealwood, not getting any seeds, feeling really bad. Who's our... I mean, you're not our farmer, though. Hmm. I don't know. We could have had only our farmer working on that. But we didn't. Let's dig out here so we can get this arbor tree bit right there. Um, let's also go to priorities and say that digging is a high priority for Banny. Since that's kind of what she's good at, sort of, just because of the skill point distribution. And because she has a little bit of aptitude to start off with.
Okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad. We have a new duplicate coming in 0.7 cycles. <laughs> At which point we're going to start needing to work on it, working on our second layer of farms in order to sustain them. Uh, yeah. This is going to be three high right here. So we have another three high room that we can set up over here. I'm not sure what I want to do with that yet. But we definitely want these oxy ferns all set up. And research-wise, she's burning through filtration, and she will get to distillation, and then we'll have her do uh, the one right underneath that, and then we'll be set for our, yeah, oxy ferns, please. Go ahead and plant these bad boys. Yeah, get a line of oxy ferns up and going. Start uh, solving the growing oxygen problem. Because again, we we had extremely little oxalite. Like we had our basic five tiles, and then we've had almost nothing else around this entire starting biome. But the water supplies are good, so getting like the, the trade off is we get our oxy ferns up and going really quickly. Why are you offline? Because of atmosphere. So we want to dig you up as well. You're no longer in CO2. And then we are going to have basically a room right here. And then we will have ladder up to here is fine. Dig out this. Let's go ahead and get to this tree so we can harvest the branches. I want to start thinking about centralizing the lumber somewhere as well. This is completely gone as well. Um, let's just dig in through. Let's just dig in like this. Dig out those. Oh, and let's make sure that we have auto harvest on any and all this good stuff. Yeah, sure. Auto harvest the stuff if it grows. That's fine. Auto harvest these, auto harvest this. I think we're more or less set. Like some of these are we're just gonna tear up for the seeds pretty soon anyways. Any other really easy to reach buried objects? Any buried objects we can get to really easily. We can kinda get to here. Kinda wanna get to here anyways, just so we can uh, get this this oxide uncovered and dig out this oxy fern right here this has no CO2 to go with uh, its growth anyways. And then we also want to kind of just dig up here and dig up this one. Something like that. Kind of just want to dig out like all of this. And then we'll dig out this. And we won't have access to this side anyways, but there's no buried objects there. Um... What else, what else, what else? Don't want to dig out that one. A little bit too close to the the water. Um, we'll just leave it at that, okay. Research-wise, distillation, sure, okay. And then we will start working on ranching right after that, I think. Because I think skill-wise we might be getting there all right, so hard digging for Ruby, so she can dig out some granite as well. Cool. Okay. Looking good. Looking pretty good. We want to hook up this... Basically, as soon as this oxy fern gets planted, I think we want to hook up uh, our power here and let them start working on that. Maybe we should bump up the speed just a little bit here. Oh, wait, is that... That's the same hatch that we had originally, right? Just buried there? That's fine. Okay, that this is the same hatch. This is not a different hatch. If we had two hatches in our starting biome, that'd be pretty sweet. But I'm pretty sure it's just one for these forest biome starts. Like, unless, unless there's some glitch where you get a little bit of another biome in there. Um... Like, because there, there'll be hatches in, like, this. Like, these buried things oftentimes are either hatches or uh, briar buff. Briar buff? Briar bluff? The briar plant. The, the decorative plant. The desert decorative plant, so to speak. Yeah. 
harvest this. Perfect. Let's also go ahead and say tile. Uh, I could haul in some granite and start just making everything pretty in that sense, but I think we're going to save the granite for pipes. You get a slight decor bonus, like because uh, a tile has decor plus five. You can get like decor plus twenty percent. You can get like an extra one point of decor by using granite for all your tiles. But we're not like our our base is going to be hideous when it comes to decor because we're going to have exposed heavy watt wires pretty much everywhere once we've got our industry set up. So we're not really in the in the running for having that work. All right. Uh, also, if you could dig out this. And uh, we have auto harvest enabled for all these. Perfect. She grabs the hexlant. Great. So let's see, we're exposing all the branches here, and then we can harvest this. Looking good. Let's go ahead and say priority six on doing this stuff up. Because uh, oxygen's going to be an issue pretty soon here. Yeah, ox are going to be an issue real quick. We need to start turning the water into oxygen. More water in our starting biome, but less ox light means do this. And this is going to be planted with oxy fern as well. And let's also priority six this. Yeah, and let's finish up the liquid pipes, connecting all this up as well. So yeah, um, we also need to keep in mind that we're going to have to keep a decent chunk of our population on farming. Because it's going to take about... I mean, the, the estimate that I saw was 60 seconds per 1,000 kilocalories. And the assumptions behind that were pretty reasonable, in my opinion. So, okay, power-wise, we are ready to connect up this. Should just connect up like so. And yeah, let's go ahead and say... And eh, we'll leave that as... well. We'll say priority 6 on this, but we're going to set the battery threshold down to like 30%. I think we'll do the same thing here. This is priority 6, but we're going to... Eh, we'll leave this one at 50% because I don't want... I don't want the research ever really turning off. I'm kind of fine if this pump stops every once in a while. It's not that big of a deal. Copy settings to here. And new dupe. What do we got? Twinkle Toes... Small bladder is actually a positive thing uh, because it means that you get twice as much waste water out of them. So instead of getting 6.7 kilograms per cycle, you get 0.2% uh, per cycle. I, I don't remember the exact math because I think it's small bladder is roughly like twice as many going, twice as many bathroom trips. So I think you get like 13.4 kilograms uh, out of it. What are the skills, though? Um, decorating's pretty useless, but researching is good. Interior decorator is actually bad. <laughs> this is actually a negative trait. It's not going to matter too much for our base. Decor morale bonus minus five is not actually going to do anything, but... Um, I don't really want tryptophobia. I think we're going to go with Lyra. She has plus one in science, but the plus three in athletics is, is pretty big. I don't know. It's either Lyra or Frankie. It's a question of how much we want plus three science and small bladder versus not wanting interior decorator and decorating. She's got researching. She's got building. She's got athletics. I'll go with Lyra. Talk myself into it. Athletics is, is a pretty good stat. It's also like... Learning is a really powerful stat as well because it increases the rate at which you get all the other stats, right? Uh, so it's really good in the long run. But athletics is probably the best, like, short-run skill that you can get. And we're going to be pretty short-run focused, I think. Also, uh, schedule. Lyra, where are we putting you? Um, we're going to take Lyra and we're going to put her right here, I guess. Slap Lyra down here, although uh, not right away, actually. Because I think she will actually try and go to sleep and suffer sore back because we don't have a bed for her. So let's put her here just for a few more. Oh, she has a bed. Okay, um, that's fine. 
Changed my mind. Uh, schedule, <laughs> Lyra, you can actually go to where we want you to be, which is right here. And that'll give us basically a full day's work out of her. And skill-wise, Lyra, I think, is going to take advanced research just to get those extra two points into science that we should start developing the other skills faster. The other option is improved construction. Uh, and then, of course, we're taking improved farming for bubbles here because we need to get her to critter ranching so we can start ranching things up. Also, we want the extra seed chances because we need to fill out all the rest of this stuff pretty quickly. Right, like we basically need another one of these, these farm layers up and running pretty soon. We also can consider digging out over here. Yeah, um, let's give an order to do this and auto harvest this and we'll set up we might need to provide a little bit of cooling to this area but i think we want to we want to be really aggressive in terms of setting up our uh insulation barriers so we're gonna like dig out this aluminum ore and then set up our insulation right in that spot is the plan and we'll have the farms basically go all the way up to the wall my cat is very excited this is uh, one of her most active periods of the day, regardless of whether or not I'm up. She's very considerate like that. <laughs> she knows that uh, feeding time is, is relatively soon. So, so she can't just run up to my bed and jump on me, so she's doing the next best thing, which is running up here and being ultra cute. <laughs> copy settings get more oxyfern down here yeah we have more oxyfern seeds to go we definitely want this all going all right so pump is good this is powered everything is looking good we really need to get oxygen to these areas now but that's what the oxyferns will hopefully take care of we need to get almost all of them domesticated given that we have five duplicates now copy settings get another oxyfern I think we want to also set up ladder going down whoops, uh, going down here just to improve the airflow through these areas right dig out across here and then we will uh, this is at 85 percent you'll probably end up just uprooting this to let the ladder continue going on but we'll have all of our oxyferns laid up right across here and that should be that should be fine i think like this is only too wide here because of this setup but once this pool of water's gone we'll straighten things out here copy settings boom okay oh what is the seed yeah this is world seed 77664628 Seven seven six six four six two one eight. If you want to uh, play along with your own version of this, and we're playing on max difficulty settings on everything else, um, and then we are printing out a duplicate once every three cycles. Yeah, you can put all your heat into CO two and dump it into space. Um, how how effective that is depends upon what materials you're using to heat it up, right? Because uh, you have sort of limits on on right. You have the overheat temperature to consider, and that's going to set the, the 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 limit on how much you can heat it up. Usually, uh, absent like passing it by some volcano that you're trying to cool down. So that's usually the process. Uh, but one thing you can do, I mean, I don't know, like beyond a certain point you don't really want to vent it out into space, right? Like once you've gotten beyond um, 150 degrees or 125 degrees Celsius, you can actually use it to capture power. So it's, it's a strategy that works fairly early on as well, right? Like if you've got a bunch of CO2 you don't want, like you're not feeding it to slicksters or, or using it for anything, then uh, then it's a good strategy. It, it, it's, it works all the way to, through the late game. I think we, yeah, we're just fine if we dig this out. Oxygen pretty low. 
We want to dig out across here too, I think. I want to open this up just a little bit here. I don't think we really need to start centralizing our meal lice in some area yet. I think we're fine if we wait on that. Um, I think we do want to set up like a dining area pretty soon for morale reasons. It's not that important. I guess stress is pretty low. We'll hold off on the dining area for now. Let's go food, hydroponic farms. Let's have them run across over here. And then let's also say plumbing, liquid pipe, igneous rock, like so. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my cat in the background, but uh, meowing up a storm. <laughs> you have food in your bowl already. I already fed you. But she's she's so trained at this point. This is the this is the part of the day where she decides it's time to start trying to wake me up. <laughs> I'm already up. I've beaten you at your game. What are you going to do now? Uh, kind of Siamese, basically. Real cute. I should post pictures at some point. Super cute. Getting a little bit chonk. I have to keep an eye on that, but... She's not at heckin' chonker stage. She's just a little bit overweight. Delightfully chubby, I guess, is the, the the technical, you know, veterinarian term for it. <laughs> let's uh, let's dig out this as well. All right, research check. Uh, let's go to improved plumbing. Where are we at on our skills? Uh, you are not really even close. Yeah, this is going to be. It's going to be a while before we can get our first ranches up and running. Because we need someone with ranching skill, obviously. So we're... I think we're setting up our infinite bathroom first. We have our wash basin here. Why is she meowing? What do you want from me? You have food already. I'm in fact petting you right now. <laughs> Oh, man. You just saying hi to the stream, Lexa? Yeah. Anyways. Um, where was I? What was I thinking about? Oh, yeah. Um, getting up some more Oxyfern and domesticating more Oxyfern. So now we have some oxygen going up here. We should also get some oxygen going up here. Let's... I guess dig out this to just try and improve the flow a little bit as well. We want the oxygen sort of settling up here, if possible. But um, we don't have to be super crazy about it. Growth halted atmosphere. Maybe we want to spread these out a little bit more. I don't know. Should be okay. But we won't be getting, I guess, maximum usefulness out of them until we've really improved airflow. Which means, I guess, just digging out like this as well. And this. And really creating like, like good, good flow corridors for the air. Dig out this as well. Um, yeah, and I don't want mealwood in these places either. Go ahead and uproot all of this mealwood. I don't want mealwood growing in my... Where I have my... Bathrooms. It seems like a bad idea. Let's get rid of those and put them in actual farms, please. And give an order to plant with any more oxyfern seeds that we have lying around. We'll dig these out eventually. Like this. We'll grab these two and then work our way down to this one. That'll give us another three. And then I think we're ready to dig out this as well. Grab this one so that'll be four... Five, one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, the rest of these can kind of sit around for a little bit, I guess. I'm not in a huge rush because they're in areas that, well, I guess they're not this one. Uh, this one's halted due to body temperature. Sure, okay. 
base ladder, igneous rock. Let's go down here and dig out this one as well. This will also get this pip out of here so we can go around and start grabbing trees and planting stuff. We might also want to consider a pip ranch at the same time that we're doing our hatch ranch. Just set up in some sort of opportunistic area with like a tree so that we can um, set a, set a, set a, uh, a pip up there and, and get them to eat the tree and get things going that way in terms of getting some more wild trees. We could also just, I guess, not auto-harvest some of these things right away, which would help a little bit. Growth halted fertilization. These temperatures are okay. All right, not bad. So let's also go ahead and say base, pneumatic door, set this up right here. That way we can get rid of this, put in some more beds right here, enclose this as a larger barracks for when we have more duplicates. And we probably want to start working on our next farm already. So food, farm tile, dirt. Another set of farms right across here, please. Something like this. And then we'll start digging out across the top and uh, get our next layer of farms done. This layer of farms right here will basically feed three duplicates at max difficulty settings. So now that we're getting close to six duplicates, we're going to want two of those. We still have the Hexalent Fruit to top us off. Oh yeah, my, my, my cat... My cat usually wakes me up, um, like if I if I kind of let her, will usually wake me up around early morning. Like once she sees, you know, sort of dawn starting to happen, she will. That's when she starts starts with the uh, the jumping on me and stuff like that. But I usually kind of keep the door closed, so I kind of lock her out at night, and then she's just limited to to meowing. I'm a pretty I'm a pretty deep sleeper, so I don't have too many problems once it's at that stage. Let's set up a cot here and then we'll dig this out as well, and then we can set this to open. And how are we doing with our oxygen? It's kind of diffusing decently well. Carbon dioxide. Yeah, we might need to set up some some more air flowy type stuff over here. Not in a huge rush. I think we're doing okay on oxygen. We just want to make sure we're getting CO2 flowing down to these oxy ferns, if possible. But I think we're all right on that front. Because we, we want to be efficient with the irrigation as well. Right? <laughs> I don't know. My cat is, uh, is also pretty smart. So she... Every time I get out of my, my computer chair, um, she knows that if she sits in the computer chair and I come back, uh, she, I, I'll give her a lot of pets before I move her out of the chair. Um, so she, she has started figuring out ways to try and get me to get out of my chair. Like she'll pretend that she wants to go outside and then she'll just, as soon as I go and open the door, she'll, she'll rush to the chair and, and plop down in it. And then... <laughs> She also kind of knows that uh, if she if she resists, if she's really hard to get out of the chair, then I'll usually give her a few more pets. So she's like, she'll just go completely limp, just ragdoll, and and just just meow whenever I try and move her, just crying like it's bloody bloody murder. <laughs> I'm training her to do all the wrong things basically, but she she trains very well. She's very bright, so we got that going for us. She does have the tendency if I if I feed her like if if I kind of feed her at different times, she'll just overeat. Like she'll be like, "Oh my god, you were you were off by an hour in terms of feeding me, and now I have to to scarf down all this food, and then she'll throw up." So she's she's not really smart in some ways, you know. She's also she <laughs> she really struggles to use um, uh, cat litter. She she has this tendency to like. I think she learned how to use cat litter by rote, right? She just watched other cats using cat litter and said, okay, that's how you do it. But she has this tendency to like sit in the litter box, but with her butt kind of off the edge of the box and just, just poop off the side of the box. And then she's, she's scratching in the litter box like she's covering something up, but she hasn't, 
She doesn't she doesn't grasp the core concept, right? She's seen the motions, but she hasn't really figured things out. Okay, so we have all the things that we need for our our infinite bathroom here. Um we kind of want to start setting that up. We're pretty much at our maximum visits for these. Yeah, in fact, I hmm I want to get that started real quick here. Um let's yeah, we want to get the infinite bathroom up and going pretty soon here. Uh, okay, I want to say medicine, sink, aluminum ore, like so. And then we are going to, I think, just uproot this and get rid of this. Something like this. We'll have to empty this outhouse, but we're going to set up a toilet right here, I think is the plan. This is priority six, right? Okay. Yeah, hopefully don't, we don't screw that up in doing this. Um, That is a risk, the way we're doing things. Because we're going to re be removing our backup outhouse as I work on this. Which is not quite what I want to do. Um, we also, I guess, want to go ahead and set up our tile before we do any of this. Just tile up across here. Let's say all this stuff is priority six right now. Get people working on it. Yeah, start working on our infinite bathroom. We have all the pieces. We'll need to set up a little hamster wheel somewhere here, but that's fine. And then for research, I guess we work towards insulation. What are the alternatives here? Could get the ranching stuff done. That's fine as well. Um, interior decor isn't that bad. We could start getting our mess hall up or great hall. Uh, we're gonna go with temperature modulation. I think this is the more important one. Let's start getting insulation up around the sides as we encounter them. Start aggressively carving out the territory that's going to be our base. I think that's the plan. Yeah, so let's start getting this set up. We'll set up a sink. Uh, we'll set up the plumbing for this. We're going to set up our plumbed toilet right here, basically. We'll have this outhouse continuing to run for a little bit. But other than that, we're going to... Oh, and... Priority seven on getting this. And dig out this. Priority seven this as well. That way we grab our oxy ferns. I don't want this oxy fern seed falling in the uh, in the water and us not being able to recover it. Seems bad. We'll uh, we'll cancel this for now, in fact. Yeah, okay, they pick up the oxy fern seed. That's fine. Base tile, igneous rock. We just definitely don't want it to fall in the water because retrieving it would be annoying. All right, so now we're finishing up this. Looks good. And we have an order to deconstruct this. That's fine. Actually, hmm, maybe I should have waited. Should have just let the polluted dirt fall into here. That's fine. We can live with that. Deconstruct this, polluted dirt falls out. Eh, I don't really care. Okay, and this needs to be like a priority seven. So we have all these oxy ferns planted down here. Do I have the plumbing? The plumbing is hooked up to all these as well. So now it's just a matter of getting the CO2 down to here. I think we have things decently set up. Yeah, this is fine. It's not great. Like this pocket down here is kind of obnoxious and the fact we have CO2 filling up here, but this will be an okay level to do things. And we can spread these out later. This is this is the, the quickest way to do that, I think. And then let's go plumbing lavatory. Slap this bad boy down right here and then dig out the rest of this. Dig out here, 
base tile igneous rock let's tile up across here um how much space do i need i want to set up a battery as well so we're gonna have like water sieve let's close this off right here say pneumatic door right here we probably want tile across the top as well, I would guess. Four, two, one, yeah. Make it this, this wide. Uh, schedule wise, does anybody need to go to the bathroom right now? We have Ruby needing to go to the bathroom. I think Ruby just went to the bathroom though. So we should be okay. Where is Ruby? Your bladder is 2%. Yeah, she just went to the bathroom. So we should have this done in time. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we'll set up the infinite bathroom. Um, we can prime it pretty easily from this line right here without much of a problem. We say refinement, uh, water sieve. We can set up the water sieve in the back, I suppose. That's just as good. Water sieve in the back, and then say power, manual generator, boom, battery, boom, wire across here, boom. Should be all set. Completing the rest of the tiling. Uh, and then plumbing. Liquid pipe. We will have our... Uh, our output line here. No, we'll have the output line right across here, I guess. I could have it up more. Um... Does it matter? I want my input line to be closer. Like I want my, my clean water line to be across the bottom, I suppose, because that'll be easier to fill in. Yeah, let's do it that way. Okay. So we'll have our clean water line come across the bottom right here. And so that means that we're going to have this go just like so. Should I flip around this line? I think so. So let's do this. Uh, cancel this. Refinement. Water sieve. Okay, so we're going to flip around our water sieve like this. And then we'll have plumbing, liquid pipe, igneous rock. We'll have this connect up like so. And go all the way out to here. And then just liquid bridge across to these different lines right here. And then base, tile, igneous rock. Actually, no, we'll just run it uh, right here, I think. So we'll have liquid bridge. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll avoid having to build a ceiling for a while here. And we'll just do this. Liquid pipe, igneous rock, connect up through here. Pretty simple. Set up our infinite bathroom. We'll have to come in here to power this thing every once in a while, but that's that's fine. Um, out of order requires emptying. This didn't get emptied? Okay, finish it up, finish it up. This is a long emptying. That's fine though. The Pluto dirt will slowly off gas. We won't have to deal with it or do anything. We're just going to leave it there. And we'll finish up these liquid bridges. And then we can just connect up uh, connect up th this line over here. And should be good. We'll probably just go ahead and say liquid pipe. Uh, liquid bridge to here. Liquid bridge to here. Liquid pipe. Igneous rock. 
something like this, and we'll just disconnect this liquid bridge, and maybe we use this this line later. Yeah, I don't know. This is gonna look a little bit. We're gonna have a little bit of a, like a tail here, just from the the putting water into the system to start it off, but that should be fine. I connected everything correctly, right? This is the output line connects here, input line connects here. Yeah, okay, we're set. All right, so get the infinite bathroom set up. Uh, we'll replace this uh, this outhouse and this wash basin soon-ish. And then we'll have plus two morale from that entire thing. And we are also, I think, getting ready to dig out right across here. Although now there is an arbor tree right here, which is a little bit awkward. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and go out across here and we'll disrupt this arbor tree. I don't think there's a great way around it. Because we'll start having the mealwood seeds ready for that. We're a little bit short of mealwood seeds finishing out the rest of this, but I want to start having this dug out before we uh, have the free mealwood seeds. Yeah, oxygen levels are not going to be great over there, are they? It'll be fine. There's probably not that much sitting that they have to do at this stage of the game. Right, because they're just not going to have uh, a whole lot of operation for the uh, for this whole system. Uh, Schedule-wise, everybody's on something that makes sense, right? No one has any... I just thought of this. No one has any of these daytime, nighttime bonuses type things. Okay, cool. Just for some reason thought I might have forgotten. Because they made it really easy now that they, they added the uh, the sort of the visual cues for all that stuff. Before you had to actually go and check. Now it's a real convenient thing. So might as well. Um, yeah, okay. So mealwood across there. Great. And then we'll finish up the rest of this. Have our infinite bathroom going. And should be good to go. Yeah, these oxyferns are still not quite getting the CO2 coming down here. That's fine. We just kind of want to start working on the rest of the stuff. Invalid construction location. Yeah, because the thing isn't built. And our sixth duplicate. What do we got? Stinky, you are the most useless duplicate I've ever seen. We're not taking you. Wow, these other people are not that great either. Mouth breather, I definitely want to avoid. We are not going to have a lot of oxygen this run. <laughs> um, I guess it's Nisbet. She has plus seven in construction. Tryptophobia is pretty bad, but uh, no taste basically means she just gets plus one to morale, given that we're going to be eating straight meal lice for a lot of the early game here. And plus seven construction is pretty good. Um, like, weirdly enough, even though construction is one of the more important skills, they give a plus 25% bonus per per point in it. Whereas like other skills get a plus 5%, even though they're something rarely used. So like Like why does why is creativity, which is something you're rarely gonna use anyways, get only plus 10% for having a skill point in it? Anyways, Nisbet's the clear choice. Welcome aboard, girl. <laughs> These other guys were absolutely terrible. Mouth breathers. Yeah, right. Schedule-wise, we are tossing Nisbet in, I guess, with Banny for now. And then we're going to bump everybody down a little bit soon to get a little bit of extra time out of them. Oh, and skill-wise, Nisbet, you have a free skill point. Let's just put it in improved construction. Sounds like a plan. We have a lot of building we want you to do. In fact, uh, priority-wise, let's go ahead and put you on building what does Lyra do again? She's got some science and she does some other things, presumably at some point. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. You can be you can be a generic whatever. This bit being unable to dig is a little bit obnoxious. That's kind of how you usually get duplicates killed, is they either can't dig or build their way out of something and you aren't paying attention and they get themselves into some situation. But I think we can we can manage. We have dedicated digging dupes anyways, so the fact that a duplicate can't dig is not going to set us back 
productivity was. This door setting can be open. No liquid research. What do we got? Okay, we're working on temperature modulation now. And skill-wise, how close are you? You're a little bit less than halfway. You're about two-fifths of the way there. Once we get that second skill point, we're going to put it into ranching. And we're going to start ranching hatches. And pips, I think. I think we're going to do a little bit of both. Is the plan. Yeah, so we have a lot of oxygen here. And we kind of need this carbon dioxide to fall down to here to feed these oxy ferns. It's part of what we're looking to do. We also just kind of need these areas to fill up with carbon dioxide before it can kind of make its way up here. So we're a little bit limited in that sense as well. But we can also... There's not much water here. Let's dig out... Um, I guess let's dig out right across here. And there's no really, eh, I don't know. We can maybe get a little bit more CO2 to push out this way. Which would help feed our, uh, feed our oxy ferns a little bit more. There's no other real CO2 to get up here. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I, this area is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of reserve for industry. So I want to be able to have this still up and running while I'm building out my industrial sector. So we're not setting it at the absolute bottom, because otherwise it'll just get in the way a little bit too much. Okay, um, we're almost at the point where we're going to start uprooting wild meal mealwood and start uh, putting it places. We also probably want to consider getting up some morale structures soonish. Would not be a terrible idea. That way we can start skilling up things willy-nilly. Okay. Power. Wire. Uh, this is not hooked up because we flipped this, didn't we? Yeah, that's why that's not operating. Sure. Let's get that done. Um, we have water going... We have, we have some water in the system right now, so let's go ahead and deconstruct this liquid bridge with a relatively high priority. Because we don't have any excess... Uh, set up right now. Like, we need to actually set up some area where we're going to have our excess water stored. But for now, like, I don't want to add more water to the system, basically. I don't want pipes backing up or anything. So let's deconstruct this. The water we have in there right now is the water we're going to keep in there. And copy settings all across here, please. Yeah, we'll need to do something with our excess water coming from the system soonish, but we should have enough time. Um, advanced research happening for the ranching soon. Where are we? We need to start considering where we're going to start drawing the line of what is our territory, territory, and what territory we're kind of surrendering to the uh, to the desert. This is hot. 78, 77. This has a whole heat problem here. Um, ooh. We're not going to use the trick that we used in the run last time. I've decided that's a little bit too exploity. Where you basically, you go to priority and you yellow alert a thing to find out what it is. We're, we're going to actually dig our way out to all these to figure out what they are. But we have our first geyser right here geyser vent whatever we want to find our way to that at some point as well but um i want to see what directions we can start exploring this like this is open anything under 72 degrees is possible anything above 72 degrees is bad like we'll just suffer a bunch of scalds going that direction so we actually have reasonable -ish temperatures around our base like in the last in the last map that we played Almost everything around us was like 80 degrees, 72 degrees, stuff like that. Here we only have basically this sort of uh, south southeast portion and then this sort of southwest portion. And even just, just small little angles of it. Like a lot of it is actually just, uh, I guess this part is 77 as well. But like this part is fine, right? This part is like 56, 
That's great. I mean, it's not great, but it's it's not going to scald us, which is is very important. So we have actually have a pretty good number of exploration directions we can go in right now. Let's also copy settings across here. We have some choices for where our initial exploration is going to go. New run, new run indeed. And then this this time, we are not just trying to hit large dupe numbers. We are, in fact, taking a duplicate every single time one is offered to us. Uh, insufficient resources, filtration medium. I need to consider that as well. Um... We also want to replace this wash basin and outhouse at some point. But we want to punch out and get a little bit of sand. Uh, just enough to throw into this uh, this water sieve over here. How close are we to having our insulation research done? A little ways away. I kind of want to not punch out until we have what we need on that end. We have some slime molds over here. Where do we want to gather some sand? And where do we want to start considering exploring? Because those are kind of one and the same. I guess we definitely need to get out to here and grab this oxy fern. Like that's 100% on the list of things that we want to do. You are growth halted atmosphere, your body temperature. Okay. Um. Right, I want to pick up this oxy fern. I want to grab this sand while we're out here, I suppose, as well. I'm also tempted to build a little storage thing for sand right here. You just dig this out, set up a storage bin, say, go schlep some sand into here. That way we have a supply of it. We don't have to exit our base anytime soon to grab more sand. Um, it is a thought. But yeah, I want to grab this oxy fern. I want to domesticate this. So, to that end, I think here is where we break our way out and make our way to here. Are that or we come down from, like all this is a little bit awkward to approach from, um, because of these water pools. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll break out here is the plan. Yeah, and just uh, go, go out across here and make our way to this oxy fern. I think this is the, this is where we're starting things. Um, where does the temperature really pick up over here? Wow, this is seventy-five. Huh. Okay. Um. Awkward. So this whole thing is like there's like a sliver of heat right here, and then it actually gets like cooler right adjacent to it. Like this is sixty-five, but then it right up here is seventy-five. It's actually colder over here as well. Um, okay. Hmm. Where am I gathering my sand? I also want to check out buried objects in the desert as well because that might mean more hatches. And we're also approaching the time where we want to start getting our hatch ranching up if possible. Is there anything... Yeah, I think we want to go out this way. We want to eventually reach this... Uh, yeah, we want to dig out and find out what this is as well. So I think it's going to be digging through here. Oh, there's also just sand right here. That kind of delays our decision a little bit. Yeah, dig that out. <laughs> there's actually sand inside of our base. Grab that. Toss it in there. Push the decision a little bit down the road as to where we want to get more sand. Uh, do we have the plumbing all set up here? Oh, no, we don't. Plumbing. Liquid pipe. Igneous rock. Let's uh, connect these up, shall we? We never finished the last step. We'll set up the connections for the ones that haven't been built yet as well. But yeah, just like so. Build out the rest of those pipes. And then we will... Once this is hooked up, we will... Uh, We'll set up the rest of this. All right, so these go in. Perfect. Looking good. So this now can be deconstructed. 
right, and then pretty soon we'll be able to deconstruct. Because this is pipe blocked, you say. Why is pipe blocked? Uh, you have a way out, right? Boom, boom, go through here. You have your way in. Boom, boom, go through here. You have water. Okay, never mind. It was a glitch. And set this right here. Okay. We are ready to update. We have renovated. Medicine. W uh, not wash basin. <laughs> Sink. Set up that right there. And now this is also ready to go. Contents none. Why contents none? This pumps out, goes to the water sieve. The water sieve has polluted water but has no sand in it. It needs the sand delivered. This needs to be priority six, let's say. Let's say also this is priority six, battery recharge threshold. We can set this really low, 10% is fine. All right, so they should go and supply sand to this water sieve now. And then our infinite bathroom will be set up. We'll need to um, replace some of the segment with a bridge. That way we can siphon off excess water. But I'm not sure if we're siphoning off excess clean water or excess polluted water yet. Okay, this has five kilograms now. This also should be set direction going right. And lavatory ready. Let's go ahead and deconstruct this outhouse. And then we'll replace it with a lavatory and then we'll have the extra morale bonus. Not that it's really important right now, but might as well get it. Great. Plumbing, lavatory, Boom, and we have our bathroom set up. This should now count as washroom. Excellent. Okay. So that's all looking good. They are using the washroom. That's fantastic. Let's also go to schedule. Yeah, Lyra needs to move down. And then we're going to move Nisbet down. Actually, we can move Banny. Right. That looks fine to me. Okay, cool. Lyra, you have your downtime right now, right? Mm, soon. Nisbet. I didn't interrupt anything, right? Nisbet, bladder 92%. Okay, so she should be fine. Okay, I think we're set. Finish this, and then we'll just need to set up a siphon somehow. Replace the segment with a bridge, and then have the bridge lead to a water reservoir, and then we'll be good. Okay, looking good. We could, I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking maybe we want to siphon off polluted water to supply trees is a possibility. And I don't want idle dupes. 100% don't want idle dupes. Um, what else do we want to do, though? I want to dig out any more of these buried objects, for sure. I think we also should probably dig out to here, dig out these. I want to dig out here. So we have a hatch right here. Do we have anything else? Not looking like it. Um... Buried objects, buried objects, buried objects. Here, I guess. Eh, we can get to that later. Um, I think really easy to get to. I guess not. This right here, I suppose. Yeah, get this one as well. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. Let them go ahead and work on that. What are we doing skill-wise? 
where are you about halfway okay close out these research wise we are almost done with temperature modulation so I think we want to start thinking about setting up our installation in these areas hmm definitely want to get insulation up here because this is just like this aluminum ore is pretty brutal for us um, let's dig out to here and then let's say base ladder igneous rock ladder up and ladder down as well and then we're going to give a dig out order for all of this and start setting up insulation right there and probably carve out a little bit of extra space here and then probably cut it off right there so let's get people moving across here as well um get to harvesting this arbor tree and link up with that okay base tile let's what level do i want this to be on i think right here let's do this it means building a little bit more tile but i think this is the altitude that i want this at dig it across here and then dig our way out to this ladder right here set up an insulating layer right here and then we'll set up another one right here and have this kind of go down from here and then the industry the industrial area can be carved out a lot of hot stuff right like we can go pretty deep into these hot areas with the industrial stuff the farming we're going to need to be a little bit more cautious with and yeah speaking of that i think we want that want to then go out across here and then like across here something like this which means i also kind of want to say ladder igneous rock ladder up to here and dig out this so we can start setting up that layer and then we just ladder all the rest of the way up here and dig and make put an insulating layer right up against the side i think or right here either way works yeah ladder igneous rock all the way up to here I guess and we will dig out two across here I think but we're gonna be really aggressive in terms of claiming space because we're not gonna have a lot of opportunities to get more space later like everything we, we everything on the wrong side of this line is gonna be hot and not worth our time so we're going to be accepting a little bit of heat into our base to accomplish that, but I think it's I think it's worth it as long as it's a as long as it's a manageable amount of heat, we'll be okay. Yeah, I think we want to I think we want to siphon off polluted water. I'm pretty sure. So we're going to set the siphon right here on this segment. I think. And uh, have this 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 area right here probably be trees is what I'm thinking. I don't know. I think I think both work. Uh, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna go that way. That's the choice I'm making. Okay, so we have agriculture set up. Uh, we have our infinite bathroom. We have our insulation. Uh, do we want to grab decor before we before we work on agriculture? How close are you? You are three fifths of the way there. Yeah, I think we can. I think we can grab like hanging pots before we. Eh, I don't know. Let's just go ranching. We can build a lot of the ranching stuff once we have this done right and maybe that's useful we can set up our ranch before we're able to actually do any sort of ranching i think i like that idea let's just do ranching i'm not going to set up a great hall right now they just don't have the, the morale needs i think right there's no there's no real point to it at this at this stage we can dig out these as well I think getting the insulation up soon is pretty important.
Like if we want to claim as much area as we can, the sooner the better. Because time is uh, time is a ticking against us on all that insulation stuff, particularly when it comes to this big layer of aluminum right here. Starvation. Who should be, who's starving? Don't be starving. What are you talking about? Just plenty of food. There is one mod that I'm thinking of getting. Uh, someone made it specifically for me, which uh, changes the point at which that starvation message uh, shows up. It shows up right now by default w uh, at a th when they get under a thousand kilocalories, and the mod just simply changes it to when they get to under 600 kilocalories, which is a lot more useful for us because basically at ravenous hunger difficulty settings, they they starve as part of the normal cycle of their day, right? That they only eat up to a certain point. But then they, they, they burn their calories fast enough that by the time it's it, they're ready for their next break, they get the starvation message. Um, that might be a little bit different if we ranch heavily. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see if I actually have to figure out modding for the game. Um, re really appreciate the guy actually going and making a mod for me. That was fantastic. But um, it might change if we, we have meat in a big way. Because... They'll probably eat in larger chunks when they're eating meat, I think. Like they, they'll grab larger chunks for their meal, and then they eat it all at once, and they, they basically eat faster. And so they top off their um, their calories more than they normally would. Whereas with, uh, with, with meal lice, they're only eating 600 calories at a time, so they're much more likely to kind of reach that that point where they, they fed themselves, but then they by the time they get to their next break, they're going to be starving. So I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll see if I need to need to put on that mod, and if so, then we'll we'll go ahead and do that. Let's take out this. I want to harvest all these arbitrary branches, and then we also want to just go ahead and start setting up base, insulated tile, igneous rock is fine. Let's start getting all of this up. Well. One thing we'll do before we do that. What's here? Tell me what is in that buried object right there. I am curious. Is it a hatch? Is there another hatch for us to grab? If it's like briar buff or bluff or whatever, then I'm fine. Okay, it is. What is this called again? Briar seed. Bluff briar. Bluff briar. Okay. I was close. <laughs> forget what the exact names for everything are. They've changed some of them, too. Like, I, I still think of the, the algae deoxidizer, which is now the oxygen diffuser. What achievement did we get here? Cool. Outdoor renovations. Makes sense. We are now outside of our base. So we're going to set up uh, insulated tile all across these areas here. We're going to go ahead and say uh, base, insulated tile, igneous rock, complete this all up. And start setting up the walls of our base to prevent any more heat from getting in. The sooner we get on top of the heat problems, the better. We also have mirth leaf, which I think counts. So we can, we can grab that, like we have a spare seed over here. We don't have any morale requirements right now. Or at least we're not at like a stage where we, where they care about morale just because none of them have accepted any skill points that, uh, that require anything. So I'm kind of waiting a little bit on it, but... Soon. Soon we'll need some morale stuff. Like give it a, give it like 20 cycles and we'll need our great hauls and whatnot up. How you doing, little guy? You uh, you making me any fresh, fresh seeds? You eating some trees, getting some seeds? How's that going for you? More wild trees, please. I don't particularly care where you plant them. I think this is fine. Anywhere inside of our base is fine. We're gonna become a little bit more picky as we uh, as we create areas outside of our base, but. I think we're Gucci. And we also are going to want to set up... I don't know what we're putting here. Um, let's do a little bit of laddering though. 
Yeah. Boom. Boom. Something like that. Just so we can reach this and start setting up a, a layer of insulation there. Okay, cool. So infinite bathroom up and going. Uh, making good progress on our research. We have these oxy ferns down here, which eventually will be submerged in CO2 and, and doing well for us. They're not quite there yet, though. There's just a little bit too much space that was left down here. Uh, there's still a lot of CO2 to fall, though. So I feel like the CO2 level will reach here, right? It's just a matter of time to allow this stuff to kind of get down there. But we'd like it to reach it down there sooner. That way we can get more oxygen as our sort of steady state. Not sure what else we want to do there, though. Um, like, what else do we change to improve the airflow besides just getting rid of this whole territory over here? I mean, we can do that, I guess. There's nothing really that we're too attached to. I don't really want to, though. Um... Do we dig out all this? It's not gonna help with the airflow that much. I wanna focus on the insulation. I wanna get the insulation first up. And then we can work on the other stuff. Also wanna get more meal wood seeds. Six dupes means we need basically both of these lines done to be self-sustaining on food. We still have a good amount of hexalent, so I'm not super scared. I think we're fine. Okay. So. We are getting done on that, on the ranching. Uh, and Bubbles is still a ways away, though. So, I think we want to have our first hatch ranch be one with a natural floor. That way, we don't have to uh, worry about overcrowding. Like, we'll just have... A little setup where they're they're living in there. Um, this area right here seems fine for that. Like set up a door and whatnot. Probably carve out because uh, I think this is going to be we're going to have like little areas like this be a pip ranch anywhere where there's a tree. So I want some non-tree area for the moment to work on. And let's. We'll do something like this, base, uh, pneumatic door, like so, make this three high, yeah, I think this is fine, and then we can just go tile, I think we can go tile door like this, and set up our ranch right here, with the uh, natural, natural floor. I think we'll be good. Okay, so ranching research done. Um, I could start working towards our ethanol systems for when we build that whole industry up. There's not too much more that we need to do on that front though. I could start rushing towards a cooling solution, in particular steel. I don't think that's super reasonable either though. Um, so let's go, let's take the free stuff that doesn't cost any water. Let's get artistic expression, just get a great hall set up somewhere. We know we need it eventually anyways. Okay. Looking good. Start building that. Research going. Bathrooms are operating. How much longer do we have before this starts backing itself up? We have a while. We've got to fill up all these pipes. We probably have like three, four cycles, I want to say, before these things start becoming blocked. Maybe closer to three cycles. Six duplicates. Each one is going to generate an extra 6.7 kilograms per cycle. Right. 
So we're talking an extra 40 kilograms per cycle, and we have eh, around around three cycles worth of pipe to fill up then, I guess. And then we'll have to have a siphon up to, to siphon out uh, siphon out extra water. But we have time. Okay, let's say base, insulated tile, igneous rock. Let's start setting this up as well. All across here. This is where we are drawing the line. Insulated tile, igneous rock. Finish up the rest of this. Finish up this. Yeah, and start cordoning off the, the heat from our base. Okay. So infinite bathroom up. Um, we probably want to grab just a little bit more buried objects. Like we already kind of have some natural seed generation happening, but we want to hurry that up a little bit. There's only so much hexalent to sustain us before we, uh, we go starving. The sooner we get our farms up, the better. See, they're not actually starving. Like, if I go to Vitals... Right, she dipped under a thousand kilocalories, but she's going to be fine. Because if I go to Schedule... Right, she's in her downtime right now, so she'll be eating. She's just going to the bathroom first, basically. But yeah, so maybe we want to download that mod. I'll see if the if doing a ranching approach changes things. Okay, I just completed the first one. Base, insulated tile, igneous rock. Finish up this. Let's cancel this part of ladder right here, because we don't really need it. And... Yeah, we'll draw the line fairly aggressively up here as well. This is probably going to be like living quarters type stuff. So it's also possible that we, we end up expanding out and just accepting a bunch of heat into that area because it's going to be sort of unimportant if that all they're doing up there is just sleeping and whatnot. But because that's the area sort of at the top of our base. New dupe! What do we got? Uh, we're not taking an anemic dupe. That's suicide. Um, anemic has got to be the worst. At least with on this difficulty setting. So it's either Ashcan or Frankie. Frankie has the opposite of anemia, basically. Plus seven athletics is pretty insane. Mole hands, so he's also got excavation. Ashcan has plus three science, and Night Owl is fine. Neither of them have really any negative downsides here. Um. So again, it's a question of whether or not we take a duplicate who's better in the long run, which is Ashcan, or a duplicate that's better in the short run, which is Frankie. Frankie's way better than Ashcan in the short run. Plus that in athletics is insane. And they do digging, and we're going to be doing a lot of digging right now. Let's take Frankie. I think we want to focus on the short run. Athletics is just so, so hugely important. Like, 300 cycles from now, Ashcan's going to be better, but... 300 cycles from now, we're not going to be, hopefully, under any sort of threat anyways. Also, let's go to stations, grooming station, aluminum ore, set this bad boy up right here, and then we'll say food, critter drop off right here, and then we're going to plop down a couple critter feeders here and here, and set up our little, little ranch for, uh, for hatches. We can't ranch them yet because we don't have the skill points. Speaking of skill points though, um, Banny can do super du super hard digging. I think we're fine with that. Let's get a super hard digger. Um, and then Frankie is a suit wearing guy, so doesn't actually have a free skill point in anything. But you have good athletics. Let's take improved carrying, I guess. Yeah, plus 400 kilograms carrying capacity is pretty insane. Like, that's just really useful. Oh no. This is not 16 wide. 
What have I done? We have we have built this incorrectly. That's fine. 14 wide, I can live with as well. But uh, we didn't set up our stairwells correctly. This is not correctly spaced. I didn't notice that. Yeah, this is this is only 14 wide when we count the door. I wasn't counting the door. That's fine. I don't really care. We'll get by. But that's a little embarrassing. <laughs> Okay. Didn't count correctly. Wow. I was like, how do we only have seven beds here? This is... Uh. Well, we have enough beds for everybody. Uh, also, schedule. Whoops. Let's put uh, our good friend Frankie right down here. Welcome aboard, Franks. Yeah, we're going to start finishing up this, get this whole layer done, and just start putting putting the shield up around the entire base. We want to get this area done pretty quickly as well, because it's near our, where our current farms are. Uh, do we start working on that as well? Is that high priority for us? It's pretty high priority. So where are we drawing the line? Probably like right here-ish. Yeah, right, right here sounds sounds good. Base, insulated tile, igneous rock. I think right here. Right here-ish. Okay. So let's go ahead and dig out to there. Uh, whoops. Dig out to here. Uh, that's awkward, isn't it? Let's not do that then, actually. Let's uh, instead let them climb up to there and we'll do something like this. Ladder, igneous rock, like so, and then boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that's fine. Start getting that wall up. Expand out these farms a little bit more. Uh, this is Oasis. So this is the what I think is the hardest map. And we're playing a, a, a version of it that is kind of bonus hard. We're playing um, one where there's going to be no cool slush geysers or anything of that sort. And we're playing with magma channels and volcanoes. And we are also taking a duplicate every time one is offered, up to 70 duplicates, let's say. Uh, because beyond that, I think we might have performance issues. And we are on maximum difficulty settings. So uh, ravenous hunger, uh, stress settings are at max, germ, susceptibility, you know, germ susceptibility is at maximum. What are we researching here? Um, what are we researching? Uh, I guess... We'll need electrolyzers eventually. What else? Internal combustion. Let's do this. We need to get the petroleum generator eventually for our ethanol. So let's do the preparation for that. Um, yeah, so all the difficulty sliders set up to maximum. Hardest map, right? Or hardest always, hardest uh, asteroid type plus a difficult map of that type. Basically the hardest challenge we can do outside of, of mods is the goal of this run. And do I have sand anywhere? Um, I want to basically be feeding normal hatches sand. Same thing with hatchlings. I'd like to feed you sand. And any sage hatches, we will feed dirt. But let's not put that in this one. Let's just put the sage hatch. Sage hatches dirt, sage, hatchlings, dirt. So one will store dirt, one will store uh, sand is the goal. Wait, did I set this wrong? What happened here? Sage, hatch, dirt. Sage, hatchling, dirt. Um, I don't understand what's going on here. Sage, hatch, dirt. Sage, hatchling, dirt. Seems fine. Right, critter feeder set. Okay, cool. I was messing something up, I guess. 
This is this is set. All right, cool. Grab any sand that's lying around. Let's work on that. Okay, cool. I think we're set on that end. We want any more buried objects. There's one right here and one right here. And anything else. Let's go ahead and dig up this excellent fruit. Get that to our kitchen, stores, pantry, whatever we want to call that. And we want any more? Where are they? Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll live with that. We might start digging up some wild meal wood to plant in our farms. Just so we can get the uh, the food faster. It's probably worth it. Insulated tile, igneous rock. Let's finish up this. Do we have sand to, to put in here? What do I have in terms of filtration medium? Zero kilograms of filtration medium, you say? This is no more sand accessible because we closed off our access to this. Reasonable, reasonable. Um, yeah, we kind of want to start digging out. Uh, I'm probably going to have to end the stream relatively soon, but I want to kind of find out what this is as well. Um, is there an easy way to get out there? What are the temperatures like? Temperatures are temperatures are fine. Let's try and get ourselves out there and figure out what that thing is. That is a plan as well. Um, yeah, I guess we want to dig out like right here and kind of go underneath a lot of the sand. We don't quite duck underneath all of it, but otherwise we need to excavate out all that sand, which is troublesome. Something like this. Oh, this is going to take super duper hard digging, isn't it? Yeah. And we don't have a way to get around from the other side to dig out that part. Um, interesting. Well, we can still figure out what it is. We'll just dig around a little bit. Dig like so. Does, that, does this get us here? Can we dig out... From, like, they stand down here and they dig up here. Does that work? We'll find out. I need to pick up some sand anyways. So this is... This is fine. We can live with it. And... Uh, yeah. Let's just uproot this. Base, ladder, igneous rock. A little bit of water will fall down here and we'll get a little bit of stress, but that's fine. I can live with that. Base, ladder, igneous rock. I want to ladder down to here. And in fact, if we're not even at that level, let's just do this. Right? That way I don't have to dig out much of any sand at all. We'll get a little bit for our filtration medium purposes. And we will also, I think, dig out like this. We'll leave it at that. Okay. Looking good. Where are we at on the skills? Uh, Ellie will go ahead and give you field research. So we can upgrade you even further. And you are getting there on the ranching. Slowly. Slowly but surely. <laughs> we need more mealwood. More mealwood. I mean, we're at seven duplicates. We need we need to start working on our third line of, of farms at this point. Maybe we just start doing that right now. Food, farm tile, dirt. Set up something like this for now. I think this is more more pressing than setting up the farm tiles for mealwood seeds that we don't quite have yet. Oh yeah, the um, Iridio 
I don't know. Um, it's tricky, right? Like, because the radio does have that that feature, but I don't know. Um, you're not that far off from getting mealwood, right? You have the same stuff in a sense. You kind of just like end up ranching really hard from the start. I don't know. I, I think it, I think if you're if you're accepting. I think if you're accepting duplicates constantly, right, maybe it is harder. Because getting the mealwood up and going, which you need for ravenous hunger, is harder. I don't know. You kind of just need to rush cooling, though. And once you've gotten the cooling, then it becomes really easy. Like, once you get... You, you, once you get ice makers... Like, where are ice makers on this? Like, in that set, setting, what you do is you rush ice makers... Uh, yeah, you rush ice makers, you set up your ice makers, you power your ice makers, they don't really require that much power, and then it's like really, you basically once you lay down any ice on any of those areas, then it's farmable, right? And it basically stays farmable the entire time, because you don't have really like heat pressing in. So I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's harder, it definitely requires a different strategy, right? And it definitely re requires you to kind of dig out a lot of Hexalent um, at the start and probably kill off a bunch of your 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 critters to, to bridge that gap. But like the very first bit of ice that you get makes a whole bunch of area farmable, right? So, and, and after that, you don't really have like, you have the same sort of standard challenges with, with uh, oxygen, but you don't have, like the heat is not, not an issue after that. Or at least it's not a big enough issue to, to matter. That's my take on it. I don't know. I think I think it's less hard. Is 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 my belief. But I am kind of interested in in trying that map out because I've actually never played it beyond like the first 50 cycles or so. Like I kind of played around with it when it first came out, but I haven't done like a full let's play. Um I certainly haven't tried like a maximum difficulty run on it. But I do know, like once you once you get that ice maker, you're 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 basically set. It's just a rush to get there. These are all good. Copy settings across here. More more mealwood, please. Research done. What do we do next? We probably want to get. Just all of our sort of free research, the stuff that only costs us dirt. Let's go down the line and get the rest of those. Also, what are we at on skills? Okay. Maybe I should set up the bedrooms like right above here. With some airflow tile or something. Or basically mesh tile I think is what we have access to right now. That way, they're, when they're sleeping, they're breathing CO2 directly onto the oxy ferns. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Base. Oh, we do have access to airflow tiles now. Where did we get that? Oh, we got it in pressure management. Okay. Um, we're still probably going to set up mesh tiles. This is really no disadvantage. Kind of fine having water fall through this area as well. Yeah, so let's do this and dig out this area and we will set up. I guess it doesn't matter. We could do some normal tile interspersed through here. Uh, something like this. How many tiles in my two, two. Bed, 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 bed. Tile. I don't know. Uh, I'm just doing this so it'll be symmetric. Base, mesh tile. Boom, boom. Tile, igneous rock. Like so. Okay. Yeah, we'll set up some bedrooms down here. That'll give it us some CO2 in this area. 
And also make sure that they're getting uh, their full night's rest. That they're not being interrupted by insufficient oxygen. That's a solution. We don't need to bring the oxy ferns to the CO2. We can bring the CO2 to, you know, whatever. <laughs> Set up this right here. All right, cool. So, we have still just the one hatch. I think we found anything else. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just one hatch in, uh, this is, do we have a ton of water here? Really? Did I miscalculate something? That's fine. We'll, we'll have some issues, but it'll be okay. Having a little bit of water down here is going to be fine. We can always pump it out when, you need, when we need to. Um, it's not like it's going to be an area that we walk through a bunch. Okay. And... What else? What else? What else? Yeah, we're really just waiting on the ranching skill point. And then we'll be okay for everything else. We'll start the ranching up and... Finish up the rest of this insulation. Interestingly, maybe this isn't the best way to insulate things. Like, aesthetically, it looks a lot better to do it this way. But um, instead, just, like, digging and, and staggering vacuum tiles is sort of better insulation. Or just even combine the two, right? If we had just dug out every other tile around here. It's a little bit trickier because of sand creating gaps for some of these areas. But you know what I mean, right? Like, we can, we can basically create vacuum in some of these areas and... Uh, have a better insulation than the normal. I don't know, it also just kind of looks bad, though. And why why would we do it if it looks bad? You know? <laughs> I don't know. It also just isn't going to be a full seal around everything anyways, so it's kind of a reason not to do it, but uh, you're not trapped down here, are you? No, we just need to complete the rest of this. Okay. So yeah, hopefully getting people to sleep down here will improve things. In this area, it can be turned into something else. Uh, but I guess we can't evict everybody yet, can we? We'll leave it as is, I suppose, for now. We can assign people to beds down here. Bubbles. Banny. Frankie. You got new cots now. Sleep down there. Next to the Oxyfern. Uh, Lyra. Nisbet. And research. What next? Uh, I don't really care about medical equipment at all. I might, that might be the only free thing that I don't take. Um, automation wire... Work towards sensors. None of these sensors are relevant. Like the these are the sensors that are relevant for the systems that we want to build. Uh, what are what are the other systems we want to build? Um, we could build an incubator. Potentially that requires some refined metal, but we can get refined metal fairly easily. Maybe we just get the petroleum generator here. We know we need it 100%. Yeah. I mean, we definitely need... Let's just start working towards our ethanol industry. The carbon skimmers, uh, the petroleum generator. We have already the ethanol distiller. Uh, we want insulated pipe as well for piping the ethanol. Um, what else do we want? We probably want radiant pipe as well. It's not strictly necessary at the start. But eventually we'll want radiant pipe for the system to, to manage the, the heat that it's going to be giving off. Sort of set up an automated system for as much of that as we can. And rely upon ice makers as little as possible. Let's also go ahead and give orders to dig out any hexalent that's nearby. Sounds like a plan. Also skills. Bubbles earned the skill. So she's going to do critter ranching now. 
Uh, that might create some morale issues for her, actually. But, yeah. We want to say hatches. I want to wrangle this hatch right here. Let's go to priorities. And ranching is top priority for you. You're our only rancher. You definitely want to do it. We need to set someone on dedicated farming. I guess Lyra? What else does Lyra do? Construction, athletics, science, creativity. Okay, let's, let's make you a farmer then. Because we need 12,000 kilocalories a day. No, we need 14,000 kilocalories a day. We have seven dupes. These are all offline due to pressure. Oh, that's not good. Really? Really? Because we had these off for long enough? That's unfortunate. Really? Or is it just carbon dioxide that's not quite in quantity? It's a little bit of everything, isn't it? Um. Yeah, we need to domesticate some more oxy ferns as well, I guess. Where do we want to put this stuff? We basically need to take the rest of our oxy ferns and domesticate them. Um. I guess we set up another line right anywhere. Don't want all of our farms turning offline because of pressure. That's not good. It's not so good. Maybe we should be less aggressive with claiming territory. Start working towards our ethanol industry now. I'd kind of buy that. Hmm. Offline due to pressure. Also, this needs to be uprooted. Get this guy out of here. Um. Yeah, we are out of oxalite entirely. We're relying entirely upon the oxy ferns for oxygen at this point. We don't have our ethanol industry up. I mean, we could always set up some electrolysis. We do have that possibility, given that we have somewhat ample water supplies. I don't want to really rely upon that in a huge way. Let's instead work towards our ethanol industry. Let's carve out the area that's going to be our ethanol industry. I think we want it to be like right on this level right here. Sounds good. Something like that. Maybe right above where this water is. So that on the water right there. Set it up like right here-ish. Sure, like a floor right there. I can dig it. Okay. Uh, I guess we're setting this up as insulated tile right here. Something like this is the plan, I think. Base, ladder, igneous... Whoa, 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 whoa. Base ladder, igneous rock, continues on down all the way to here, and then let's set up igneous rock across here, let's say, and we'll have like petroleum generator stuff up here, and then we can have, we can have this extend out the other way, and we'll have our refineries. And then we'll start turning our lumber into uh, polluted dirt and polluted water and all that good stuff. We don't really have all the technology yet. I guess because we spent so much time just grabbing the free technologies. I thought we'd have a little bit more time than this, but yeah. Growth halted due to pressure, huh? Don't want that to happen. Um... Where else do we have CO2? Kind of up around here. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's go ahead and arbitrary branch oxygen. So can I build right here? 
one, two, three, four, five, and we can build on these two tiles right here. Let's go ahead and say hydroponic farm tiles. Eh, I don't know. Um, they got across here, basically. Base, tile, would be good. I want to kind of set them up in the stairwell area. So let's work on that. Let's just say that we have food, hydroponic farms, set up like four here, four here, something like that. And the rest of this can just be sort of normal tile. We'll have a little bit of a hole there because of the tree because these are going to be the five branches that the tree grows. But then we can set up another line basically right across here. Like so. And then just so the thing doesn't get confused, we're going to set up a liquid bridge right here. And then right here, and we'll grab the rest of our oxy ferns. We need to get them all planted to sustain our pressures. This is not what we're looking to see a bunch of farms offline. Wood burner, maybe? I don't know. Just to get the CO2 levels up, just to get the air pressure up. I kind of see that. It's so much more useful to get the, uh, the ethanol out of the lumber, though. And we'll be generating a lot of CO2 that way as well. So I kind of just want to... Eh, I don't know. I don't want the farms offline, though. That's really obnoxious. We could just set up a wood burner just to get the pressures up a little bit. I mean, it is the quickest way. It's not a bad idea. It is kind of weird, though, that we have... I mean, it's really just that they're exhaling in these areas, I guess. Because this area is fine on the pressure, right? This area right here is at 450 grams per tile, roughly speaking. And then we get out to here and we have this drop off. I guess because the carbon dioxide is messing with the airflow a little bit. Like we have fine air pressure up here as well. It's just really the CO2. Like I'm tempted to just poke into this area right here as a solution instead. Basically just say, I mean, I, I wanna still be able to access these for, let's make sure we can do that. Let's dig out across. Yeah, we basically wanna dig out here, right? Get this somewhat higher pressure area to, to hopefully flush out that CO2 and push it towards this stuff. Cause it's just some weirdness with this carbon dioxide over here, settling in a weird way. Either the CO2 just falls down over to here, both would work. Something like this. They can still access it then by running up here. Access these trees, I should say. Let's say priority six on just completing this. That lets us avoid a wood burner. I just really don't want to burn wood. Also, what is our bathrooms doing? So this is about to back up. So we need to also set up our siphon at some point here. Um. Yeah, so I also want to dig out across here, basically. Base tile, igneous rock. Whoops, just like that. Yeah, I mean, the, the general air pressure in the base is okay, right? So it's, it's almost just an issue of distributing the pressure to these areas more than it is getting the pressure up in total, I think. I think. I mean, I don't know, getting some more CO2 just to cover these oxy ferns would also still just be really nice. With seven duplicates though, we are definitely beyond the point where our oxy ferns are able to handle things. So we kind of need to start working on our Working on our air solutions anyways. Let's go ahead and give an order to dig out any and all these oxy ferns. 
We also want to go and rescue our Oxyfern that's over here. Um, I mean, I guess we just dig out across here and start a sort of dash over to here. I would be fine with this and dig out here. Something along those lines. Grab up all of our Oxyferns. So is this going to push out some of the CO2? I mean, the other alternative is we just have some more duplicates run over here and exhale and add to the CO2. We will need to get air pressure up, though, a little bit. I mean, pretty soon we're going to be in a situation where we want it to be up. I don't know. Oxyfern plant. Oxyfern plant. Uh, growth halted pressure because we just dug out a bunch of area. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's just them exhaling, and it's kind of messing with the airflow. So the pressures aren't equalizing between this area and this area very well, because the CO2 is enough to block it, weirdly enough. Because, like, this isn't settling in a really good way. Oh, wait, is there... Huh, there's some polluted oxygen up in here. That's also kind of, like, this polluted oxygen and the CO2 are blocking a lot of the, the pressure, which is weird. Um, so how did I get polluted oxygen up there? I guess it came up from here? Basically some food rotted from down here, I guess. What? How did I get polluted oxygen up here? Yeah, there's, there's basically polluted oxygen kind of just blocking off airflow from over here. But the game isn't able to handle it. That is awkward. We still really don't want to have a lot of farms offline. Ah, hmm. Yeah, this, this tile polluted oxygen is messing everything up. When it's just two gases, they're usually able to exchange pretty well in this in this corridor. But 5.5 grams of polluted oxygen just messing things up. The CO2 isn't able to really flow out here very well. So I think that's what caused the bottleneck here. Um, I'm guessing. How do we solve that though? Besides, I guess uprooting a plant and doing and messing with things like that. Also, it's priority six. Of this so that this remains a bathroom when we maintain our morale. I see stress climbing up a little bit. I'm not really super happy about that. You are groomed. Wildness is going down. Yeah, it's just that one tile of polluted oxygen that I think is messing with everything. I mean, also us just digging out large areas is not probably helping very much with our air pressure in, in general. Hmm... In any case, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to wrap up the stream soonish. So let's, before we end the stream, uh, let's, let me try and figure out just so I can think about things while I'm away from the game. What is over here? I'm really interested in knowing. It's priority six this work right here. Get us out to here and figure out what this is. Everything else, uh, I think, can be can happen slightly slower. Arbitrary branch, arbitrary branch. So here's the five branches. One of them blocks here. We'll have to fix that eventually. Yeah, so I think we're going to set up our industrial sector basically right here. Right, it is a little bit awkward that we don't have the full 16 spots over here, but we can we can mess around with that. We're not going to need doors in a lot of these areas. We're not going to need good airflow in any of these areas either. Right? This is going to be the bottom of our base. We don't need stuff flowing below it. 
Um, so we can we can mess with that, right? Because we do have 16 tiles worth of space. Just two of them are reserved for like doors. Maybe another two for corridors. Um. Yeah, I want to figure out what this is, and I think I'm going to call it a stream, because I've got to go do stuff. But uh, let's also go ahead and get all of our oxy ferns planted. I kind of like to do that as well. Get all of them settled into some hydroponic tiles. Because we are going to need to start generating some atmosphere here, right? We're going to need to start getting our industrial solution up and running. I'm wondering what this is, though. This might help us, right? Like a natural gas geyser or something like that it might be nice. Provide some power early on. Provide a little bit of extra polluted water, right? A lot of things that it can, can be that will help us. Is this reachable? This is unreachable. Uh, so we can't get to... What if I dug out this? Would I then be able to sit here and reach it? Or am I just kind of out of luck in terms of, like, I need super duper digging to be able to get there? How far away are we from super duper digging? We have super hard digging. Okay. Um... Let's take field research on Lyra so that she can start skilling up other stuff and Ruby might as well take super hard digging. Either that or improved carrying. Um, let's take super hard digging. I think we're gonna need an extra super hard digger. Yeah, I'm not sure we can ever dig this out because I think we need to be I think we need super duper hard digging to get here. If that's so, then we just will end the stream without knowing what it is. But it would kind of be nice to sate my curiosity. You know? Let's uh, also, because the only reason they dug this out in the first place was that it was priority six. Let's priority six that as well. <laughs> just a test. I really should know at this point, after having played this game for this long, I should know what angles and distances they can dig from, but I don't actually know. This is still unreachable. Yeah, this is unreachable. You have heat stroke. Oh, poor Banny. Heat stroke. Yeah, I mean, I guess having you run around in this whole area wasn't that great. Is there anything else around here of interest? It does get cooler down here, and there's basically a sandstone biome right here. That's good to know. And there is another geyser of some sort down here. Interesting. Anything else of note? Not really. Another slime mold. This is a large slime mold right here. These temperatures are pretty reasonable though. What is this? Abyssalite, green abyssalite with sand behind it. And then this is angry abyssalite. This is not happy abyssalite. Uh, so there's some sort of volcano-y thing over here, but then there's some biome underneath that. Okay. Looking fine. We're not gonna have a lot of time to explore anyways, because we need to set up our ethanol industry to support our atmosphere around the base, right? To get like polluted dirt starting to get produ that produced, that way we can get oxygen, etc., etc., etc. So it's not that big of a deal that we find out what these geysers are anyways. We just we're kind of focused inward for the next ten cycles or so. Still. Is there really no way to dig out anything of this without super duper digging? I mean, I guess if we came around from over here, right? We could dig out. We could dig out right here. Uh, I have to go all the way around that, though. I don't know if that's really worth. We'll leave it for now. All right, I think that's it for the stream. Uh, I'm going to run off and do stuff. 
uh, real life stuff. But yeah, from the up left side of the geyser, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the the area we have to enter into. I don't know. I, I would. We're gonna get heat stroke sending people down here. It's not that big of a deal. Heat stroke is not like. What is what is the the minuses that you get? Minus five on machinery. Minus five on construction. Minus five on cooking. Minus five on science. I mean that's fine. What do you what do you do though? What does Banny do? You are a digger. Okay. Uh, so I guess it isn't great that she got heat stroke. But uh, we'll leave this for the next stream, I think. And then we'll also try and find out what this one is. It's like, we know it isn't a cool slush geyser, just because I specifically asked um, the person who gave me the map not to give me one with a cool slush geyser, or any cool slush geysers, period, because that defeats the whole purpose. Um, but... It could still be, like, natural gas might not, would be pretty nice. Or it could be one of the kind of trickier to use water geysers. Like a water geyser or a, um, uh, I mean, I don't know. It could also just be a volcano, <laughs> realistically. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for the stream. Um, pressure in this situation kind of worked itself out once the polluted oxygen managed to find its way out of here. But um, next time we will be working on setting up our industry. And it's going to be a set of petroleum generators, which this time, um, in, in contrast to the way that we set up our industry before, the petroleum generators, I think this time I'm just going to have in a sealed room. So that way we don't have to deal with any of the CO2 from those petroleum generators. We will um, have to come up with a cooling solution for that room sooner, like an automatic cooling solution, uh, rather than what we were using in the past, which was uh, ice temp shift plates. But... Um, yeah, I think if we if we seal off the CO2 that comes from our petroleum generators, then we don't need as many carbon skimmers, which means we net more power. With more power, we can actually afford to, to develop some sort of cooling solution, right? Whether it's just a ton of ice makers or what I'm leaning towards, which is an ethanol boiler. Um, I made a video a while back on uh, cooling your base by boiling ethanol. And uh, I didn't use it in my the previous Let's Play because I thought that it was going to be patched out of the game and didn't want my to have my whole Let's Play come to a crashing halt because my cooling system failed due to a patch. But they haven't patched it out yet, and the game's been out for a while, so I'm thinking that it's here to stay. So maybe an ethanol boiler might be the way that we um, we divert some power to to handle the cooling, and that would be a, sort of a labor-free and pretty power-efficient solution as well. Um, and I'll just set it up the exact same way I set it up in the uh, in the sort of tutorial video that I made. But yeah, that's going to be the plan. A uh, bunch of ethanol refineries or ethanol distillers uh, over here. We're going to be operating off of whatever wild trees we have access to for a while. Um, and I think we're going to set up a second ranch as well. Like I think I want to have just a a pip ranch like over here. We'll say we'll do something like um, turn off auto harvest for this tree. Uh, we'll stick a pip in here. And then we'll just have them plant like new uh, uh, arbor trees. And then we'll move the ranch to like over here and say this one uh, is turn, turn off the auto harvest for this. And we'll start tr trying to gather wild seeds by moving pips around uh, the map for us and having them uh, try and eat some of these, these arbor trees for us and generate some more wild trees. But we're going to have a little while where we, we try and rely upon wild trees and just have all of the uh, upside of our industry be... Uh, be free, right? We're not have to. We don't have to put in any polluted water into getting um, our resources. But then eventually, we're gonna have so many duplicates, we're gonna need to start uh, domesticating everything, and then we're gonna change things up. But uh, yeah, that this is gonna be where I think we set up our industry, just like really deep into the sort of desert area here. We'll probably end up refining the slime into algae as well, turn that into oxygen. We're basically going to eat a lot of these uh, slime molds, basically, turn them into oxygen. They're kind of like a nice little one-shot way to improve the oxygenation in our base. Uh, but yeah, that's the plan. Increased uh, industry, figure out what these uh, geysers are, slash events, slash whatever. Continue building out the insulation all around our base, ranching. All that good stuff. Uh, that's what we will be doing next time. And uh, I'll see you guys then. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.